am I? Why am I here? Forge. Yes. Forge sounds decent, so I'll go with that. <laughs> Star Trek Adventures. Who am I? Another day, another destiny. Oh, that sounds like Zulu. <laughs> Nope, that's as loud as it gets. Hmm. Hello. 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 Uh, Morning. Morning. Sorry. Oh, no. Headset was going a bit weird. We don't want Latude on the bridge. Get back to the transporter room, Latude. Uh, all right then. Blonk, blonk, blonk. <clears throat> he brings everybody down as Latude. Yeah, you got Lieutenant Bravo as well on the bridge. Get off the bridge. He's a spy. Listen, with Lieutenant Bravo. <laughs> Bravo's there to keep the engines working. No, 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 that's, that's Vibers. <laughs> You're very faint then, Jan. Yeah, you're sounding a little quiet. Thank God, I thought it was just me. <laughs> How about now? Oh, well, that's much better. Oh, I, I changed my input settings for, I think it was the game last time. And uh, apparently it's... Uh, it's <laughs> Less volume on my settings. This one needs more volume. Just to keep you guessing. Oh, yeah. Alrighty. Well, then. Oh. It's 7 p.m. It's that time again, ladies and gentlemen, as we tune back in to our awesome adventurers. And then I take off that screen, and it's just us. Sorry. No, but see. We're playing, we're not awesome. Yeah, 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 I am right, claiming right. that you the are gonna, not the GM's awesome. going to be like that tonight, is he? Right. You are epic. <laughs> there we are. How about that? Okay. Assuaged enough? I hope so. Yeah, you get a pass. Just going to say, it's nearly Commander Andrews, so uh, I, I'm happy. And uh, you, I hope you notice I am wearing my official garb for tonight, although I am missing pips and the communicator, and indeed an actual collar. So, I'm not wearing the official garb. But that means that I have to go and watch the stream now, and I can't do two things. Well, like um, I don't blame you. It's not much to see. It's a, it's a person in a Starfleet uniform with a sinister-looking goatee. But we're not talking about That's William Riker. Right, let's go, <laughs> let's go and watch the stream. Oh, no, 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 don't go any trouble for me. Seriously. <laughs> Quick, stream sniping. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, see, I see that we've got a stream, we've got a stream sniper. I'm like, you look good, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. But um, yes, officially, welcome to the uh, <laughs> nerd. Thank you. Welcome to the stream once again as we uh, embark on yet another episode of the adventures of the USS Navis. So today that we get infinite maps. Yeah. It's because you're seeing me, seeing me, seeing me. So I'm going to turn this off. <laughs> was John not around tonight? I don't know. He was around moments ago. Night shift? We found the night shift. <laughs> what? What? Where is the night shift? It's on. It's on the stream. <laughs> do 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 do. That was me checking that the uh, bridge night shift ambiance was playing. Can you actually hear it? Uh, I can I'm hear guessing it. that's a no. 
can only hear very, very quiet sort of like ambience in the uh, video feed. How about now? 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 I can hear it louder. Yeah, I can just about hear it. I'm going to have to turn up my, uh, my, turn up my flipping uh, sound setting. Oh, 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 it's coming through. Okay, just so I've got a baseline for the uh, for the old sound. Tempted the view screen has gotten stuck on the screensaver again. <laughs> yeah. I'll just adjust the volume so that later on I can have them at the volume required. By the way, to whoever actually made these uh, ambient videos, uh, you rock. It actually helps me get to sleep, believe it or not. <laughs> As does watching my own stream back, funnily enough. Oh my oh, god, listen. how self-affectionate is that? <laughs> <laughs> I just love listening to the sound of my own voice. <laughs> I suppose there's got to be somebody that likes the sound of their own voice. <laughs> see, see, if I was really cool, I'd now be going, Matt, you want to go to the toilet? <laughs> Excuse me a sec, guys, I just need to use the lav. Well, I thought that would only work when you're hearing it in your sleep. <laughs> Quite. Thankfully, no. Anywho, um, we don't have a John, it seems. So that's unfortunate. However... Do we have a Brian? We might have Brian's mum. <laughs> In the meany teeny time. Um, background. Oh, that's a good point, actually. Uh, at the end of uh, last week's game, uh, after we'd stopped streaming, and after, during downtime, I'd sorted out the uh, reputation gains, I made the offer of whether or not you guys wanted to use the new awards system. I know Sean took a look at it. Uh, were the rest of you not bothered, not interested? Uh, I've got to admit, I have not had any spare time to look at any of this stuff. Okay. Yeah, I'm similar. Yeah. Um, it's just uh, an additional uh, rule, not rule, uh, an additional option for um, for yourselves as, as players that if you want to give your um, character an advantage, like a, a talent, that uh, is born out of um, yourselves gaining reputation for your actions during a particular mission, um, rather than just letting that reputation accrue, you can actually um, purchase awards, like medals, and uh, each, each award, medal, commendation, whatever, comes with um, obviously its own prerequisites and it also comes with its own advantages. If you're interested, in the journal entry uh, rules section, there is a little note on awards, and it also lists the awards currently available. Um, and also as a note that um, Sean uh, brought up quite uh, quite helpfully, you're only allowed to spend the reputation you gained for the last mission, not all of it accrued so far. Uh, your reputation gains should still be in the Discord chat uh, history, so there's that. Jan, you were about to say something. I was. Uh, now you've forgotten? Nope. Nope. <laughs> I probably never knew. Well, my apologies if I talked over. No, no, no. I was, uh, I was just reading through the uh, awards section. Perhaps I was reading, the, uh, not my using my internal voice. Who has an internal voice? I mean, really? How does that help? You can't hear if it's a stupid idea or not. Anyway, or is that just me? I mean, if it's a stupid idea, 
I thought all ideas the in the history of the human race were stupid. <laughs> like bungee jumping. <laughs> Apologies to anyone listening who likes bungee jumping. <laughs> but seriously, have your heads examined, because... <laughs> I, I haven't bungee jumped, but I have done bridge swinging. Oh, well, that, that's completely different. Uh, on the ground, sir, I don't know what bridge swinging is. It sounds like you swing yourself from a bridge. Yeah, with a bungee cord, um, but it's not tied around your ankles. It's more of a harness that goes around your uh, torso, I guess. Well, okay, that, that sounds wow. like there's actually some safety in there. You have a seatbelt on, that makes it okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, you, you technically have a seatbelt on on bungee, it's just wrapped around your ankles. You have, a, you have an ankle belt, and that's just a fashion accessory. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Now now I can't get bridge swinging out of my head. It's just... <laughs> I'm just waiting for Dr. Bertram to be cancelled by all the bungee jumpers. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there's like, you know, at least, what, from what I remember, the next generation, one episode a season, which begins with the Doctor waving a magic wand over someone's in slightly injured arm, and then says, now no doing dangerous sports on the holodeck, which is specifically designed not to be able to hurt you. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> yeah, for it not to hurt you doesn't say anything about injuring yourself. Well, you know, judging by, you know, there were like four ep uh, episodes every season where the holodeck goes on and damn near kills someone, more than one person, the ship, the Federation, or occasionally reality. I'd say that really we should actually scrap the holodecks until we get them working with safety protocols not able to be taken off. How would we be able to shoot Borgs with uh, with um, projectile weapons? Oh wait. Replicate projectile weapons! <laughs> <laughs> God Bertram, stop it with your common sense. <laughs> right, I'll, wa I'll wave my magic <coughs> wand over that part of my head to remove my common sense. Yep, there we go. Sorted. Yay! Neelix was an excellent cook! <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. any Star Trek Voyager fans have now left the room. There was actually, from what I uh, read today, a, a theory from Chakotay, no less, that uh, Neelix occasionally, deliberately, made some of his dishes ridiculously awful so that the Marquis and Starfleet uh, crew had something to bond over, something in common, so that they could talk about how awful Neelix's food was in the mess hall. No, Neelix, no, there's no logic of that. Neelix was just an idiot. <laughs> he was on the top ten list of most hated Star Trek characters. Which is a shame, because apparently his act is an awesome person, but the character was awful. It's usually the case. Like, if you don't yeah. mind me cross-branding for a moment, cross-franchising for a moment, Lena Headey. I don't understand why people have a problem with Lena Headey and not Cersei Lannister. <laughs> it should be the other way around, guys. Uh, she sells poison milk to school children. She does. <laughs> because she's pretty mean. She's badass. She played the Queen of the Spartans, for heaven's sake. Yeah, but the movie wasn't really very good. <laughs> that doesn't it was matter. Of, it, was, it was Game of Thrones when she became queen, but, you know, we digress. Uh, right. Sure, yeah, we digress in here. It's going to start a rant of Game of Thrones. It wasn't really all as good as many people say. Ah, it's all right. Nobody's watching this. Or are they? Nope, didn't think I just so. Got, I just got a private message. And it uses the word Philistine and some other ones I can't say on the family friendly stream. <laughs> this is family friendly? Yeah, like Star Trek. I've just I've just seen on the stream is Latude is hiding in the conference room. Yep. Get out of the conference room. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually at the door listening to the entire bridge conversation. Taking yeah. notes. Do you know I'd love to see an episode of Star Trek which literally just the crew, you know, the main characters of the crew on the bridge, nattering and bantering when nothing interesting is happening. Like that episode of Invader Zim, Zim eats pancakes. <laughs> that, that was they spent the entire budget on the title screen, so the rest of the thing had to be Zim and Gur eating pancakes while Dib watched. And if anyone and gets these glorious. references, 
Nice. If anyone gets these references, um, hello to my fellow 40, you know, 40 somethings. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I went there. <laughs> Anywho, it looks like we're going to be a man short tonight, unfortunately. John might be joining us a little bit later. We shall see. But we've given him the requisite uh, amount of time to join us, so we'll just go ahead and allow him to catch up if he makes an appearance. So, before we start, are there any notes, anything anybody wants to make note of before we start? Like, uh, things your character may have gotten up to in the interim between last mission and the start of this one? Sizing up Commander Loss's chair when he's not sat on it. <laughs> actually, if he's Bajoran, then is is actually Commander Lenaris. Loss would be his first name. So. Is he Bajoran? He's, 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 he's Bajoran. I almost said Betazoid. Yeah. There's too many Betazoids on this ship. There's not enough Betazoids on this ship. Yes, yes, so they fused together to become a Betazoran. <laughs> yes, and when Lenar Commander Lenaris is uh, off duty, as just kind of like, I am the senior officer of the bridge, I will just sit down and become. Well, technically, as second officer, um, when you're not involved in um, Alpha Shift, you are actually uh, in the captain's chair on Beta Shift. Yeah. So, you get the other chair. Yeah, but out of respect, you don't sit on the captain's chair. <laughs> so you size up the, the XO's chair, you know, <laughs> making sure your butt groove kind of fits. Yep. <laughs> If he accidentally no dies on the next away mission, it's not my fault. Funny you should say it that. Is your fault. We'll just blame you for everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, especially after um, episode two established that 200 years ago, Starfleet officers were in uh, very Klingon like, in that they would off their captain if they found the opportunity to in <laughs> order to seize control of a ship. We, we ran away thinking, 200 years ago, Starfleet Wait, was much lacking in recruitment. I, I just had a horrible realisation. Did we check them to see if there was any sort of temp you know, uh, spatial displacement? Because they could have been Mirror Universe. No. <laughs> we just <laughs> let them be the Universe ship. <laughs> like, hi guys, welcome to our universe. Here's 200 years into the future, have fun. They didn't have goatees. <laughs> Quite right, they didn't have goatees. <laughs> and the women didn't have... Um, Cut off tunics showing their navels, yeah. so yeah. that's how they you were knew. Ridiculously 60s level sexist. <laughs> nope, in reference um, to uh, last episode, uh, the crew of the USS Atlantis uh, were taken away to uh, be rehabilitated. Obviously, a lot of them had suffered greatly from uh, post traumatic stress and the war crimes of more than a few members of the senior staff had to be dealt with by ju the judiciary. So, um, yeah. Was it was there a bit where we handed Kearney a report and then walked away two minutes later from his room there was a cry of, What? <laughs> um, you may have heard cries of despair and, uh, and, and such like, yes. But on the plus side, uh, Kearney now gets command. Haha, <laughs> 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 yeah. Commander Kearney. Yep, yeah, of another NX ship, which is because technically they're hey, NX hey, ship. He what? ain't getting on board our ship. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't taking command of our ship. Oh, you're just saying that because he's already read oh. one NX sh ship. Hey. Hello. Hello. And here's Lieutenant Natala. Or John. Or both. Um, <laughs> so I was going to say. Lieutenant Nova would have carried on being the unofficial head of morale, trying to make sure morale improves. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah, that would a, a much needed uh, boost of morale has had to be given after, well, it was it was pretty much shock horror, I think, the crew of the Navis would have had. Of, did people behave like this 200 years ago? At which point Nova just goes, hey, look, chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we know that beta soys like chocolate. It's a proven fact. Uh, In... <laughs> Sorry, go on, John. No, I was just responding to Webby's joke. Um, in regards, actually, um, 
I, I read up a little bit more on what people's uh, jobs are. And as operations officer, um, everybody has to um, come to Nova, Lieutenant Nova, in order to request um, usage of uh, the various resources on ship. So all departments actually have to come to Lieutenant Nova to ask permission to draw power from the warp core for either sensors or, or uh, science experiments and stuff like that. Ah. So everybody does have to uh, come to Lieutenant Nova at, at some point. So she has an inroad to being able to pretty much everybody. I mean, the only one who wouldn't necessarily would be obviously the chief engineer. So we now know who to blame for rooting everything through the deflector dish. Yeah, Linus. Is there anyone that doesn't come help me? (laughs) No, for the last time, if you can't eat out of it, it's not that kind of dish. But speaking of stuff that happened since the last episode, Matt, mm-hmm. uh, did Dr. Bar- Bertram's request go through? Remind me of what the request was, sorry. Uh, he was hoping to be allowed to go down to the planet to gather some samples. Oh, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. There was no reason once you had all the crew of the Atlantis secure in the uh, shuttle bay yeah. um, with its great acoustics. Um, the, there was no reason why you couldn't um, transport down to the, uh, the the planet and uh, grab some more samples of the energy devouring moss. Of course, the, when you went down there, the planet would have been a bit worse for wear because when the wormhole expanded, the gravitational uh, forces coming out of the wormhole expanded, which caused even more seismic disturbance on board that planet. So on board, on the surface of that planet. Um, so yeah, it would have been a bit hairy going down there, but um, with Lieutenant Fazanan piloting a shuttle or the, the, the runabout, you would have had smooth sailing all the way, I'm yeah. sure. So, are we planning to weaponize this moss? You know, just shoot it in an enemy ship and leave it on there? Uh... <laughs> Load the torpedoes. <laughs> well... Captain! They are firing! Moss? <laughs> the moss is on our ship! The moss is eating our reactor! Well, yeah. uh, to be honest, that um, I mean, it's partly he's a botanist and is obsessed with research, and it's because of the weird phenomena that seems to have brought it about, it's potentially unique. Yeah, so absolutely. if he can actually isolate it as a unique species of moss with its unique energy eating effects, it could have potential. Um, once study needs replicated and worked out how it works it could have potential um stuff we could take advantage of it and i might even be able to get it to name it after myself officially nerd <laughs> i'm the doctor and a botanist yes of course i'm a nerd bertram's moss hmm. that rolls off the tongue quite nicely actually yeah, yeah dr moss <laughs> well I, I i got my oh that's what the crew are going to be calling him now <laughs> dr moss that's it We've settled on it, Dr. Moss. Yeah, yeah. Bridge, mm. Dr. Moss. Uh, sorry, no, Dr. Bird. It's like a matter. There's a power surge in your um, cybernetics. Don't worry, I have just a fin to leech off the extra power. <laughs> Moss! <laughs> what have I created? <laughs> um, yes, there's no reason whatsoever why Dr. Bertram wouldn't have been able to come away with a sample, and of course it would have been entirely fascinating uh, piece of um, botany to examine. Probably would be well within Dr. Bertram's purview to keep a sample and just forward a clipping of the of the moss yeah. onto uh, Starfleet uh, science. Yeah. Whereupon uh, Starfleet R&D are probably going to have a crack at it too. Uh, yeah, but it, it, I I want it on record. I found. It. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Wait, how, whoa, whoa, how many whoa. layers of redundancy are we putting into the moss containment system? That's <laughs> yes, going to be entirely Doctor Bertram's responsibility. Do we do we have sta- the equivalent of stasis fields? Um, sick bay as a <laughs> as a rule in the twenty fourth yeah. century has. Yeah. Um, stasis force fields on every bio bed and also yeah. um, the uh, chief medical officer has the authority to um, call a quarantine lockdown which locks down yeah. the entire ship and we're talking force fields and bulkheads yeah. um, 
Sickbay, if I remember, also has restraint fields, mostly on bio beds again, but um, you've also got sterilization fields in there. Basically, um, if you wanted to, uh, Sickbay is, you could easily turn into a prison if you wanted to, with the yeah. sheer amount of restraint fields and whatnot you've got. Hydroponics would also have a, like, um, specific uh, growing chambers, etc., which you could, yeah. in theory, lock and isolate. Mm. Yeah, because one of the earlier things the Bertrand want to do is make sure that this doesn't have some phenomenon that means that sta it can break out of stasis somehow. I can't imagine how that would be possible, but just in case. So I might spend a little threat here in the opening moments. <laughs> it's entirely <laughs> unrelated, I assure you. Yeah. No, I'm not doing that. Okay. We've got nine layers. Uh, well, no, what we'll do is we'll put 11 layers of redundancy in. Now spend all your fret. <laughs> Actually, one That's other such thing is well. uh, The other thing I was hoping to get samples of, uh, obviously Mosses personally, Bertrand's sort of like favourite thing from there, but there was also the water was affected, also, there was a chemical in it that um, messed around to cause psychosis in the humanoid brain. Correct. I was hoping to get a sample of that, not actually to act as a poison, but uh, with the hopes that potentially it studied, if he could actually nail down the effects and work out a way to uh, reverse it, it could potentially lead to a treatment for certain psychological um, brain affected effects in the future. You did succeed emphatically at your um, treatment, since you did take a sample before and treated Lieutenant Kearney, so taking more samples, fine. Yeah. You've yeah. already developed a method for counteracting the um, the, the yeah. psychotropic agent anyway, but yeah. of course more of it means more to study and there are obviously yeah. more, you were concentrating on neutralizing the thing at the time. Whether or yeah. not more of it could be utilized for other other purposes, yeah, absolutely, yeah. send it on to R&D. Once again, it will not be weaponized. <laughs> Just shoot, shoot, it at a, shoot it at an enemy vessel, they're all tripping out on acid. Yeah. Officially, nothing is ever weaponized, so you know. Yeah, yeah and um, there is no uh, section 30 something or other, that's a bit. <laughs> it's a fairy tale to scare children. Okay, I'll so. To, to Lieutenant Lacoon. <laughs> when he's not looking, just inject him with it as you go past and watch the uh, watch the result. See if it lightens him up or makes him worse. Well, my ultimate goal this is uh, like to find out a way to have instead of stimulating to psychosis, sort of um, almost have like a kind of reduction effect, a calming effect, and then if I could perfect that one day, I'll just be going and accidentally injecting over with it. Never <laughs> <laughs> done to deserve that. Well, well, Nova is kind of the Duracell bunny. Yeah. So, purely from an energetic standpoint, you understand, I was alluding to nothing else at all. Stop that right now. I can see the looks on your faces. Anything else anybody wants to make note of before we start? No. Okie dokie. Spiffing. Okay then. Well, in that case, um, the only things to make note of now is that um, last time I made note that it was about a week after Voyager disappeared in the Badlands. So since then, another week has elapsed. And rather than start this off on the bridge like we normally do, we are in fact going to start this episode off in Commander Lenaris's quarters, as he is currently engaged in meditation uh, in front of his Shrine to the Prophets. And at the same time, we're going to engage in a bit of voiceover, as well, I finally get to do this. First Officer's Log, Stardate 4825.3.1. The Navis has been directed to assist in a peacekeeping capacity to the planet Ashgrave 4. The planet, so I'm told, is rather unique amongst the planets within Federation space, and as a result, I've had more requests for shore leave than when we were last at Ryza. 
Apparently, everyone who walks on the planet's surface feels a presence generally described as divine. And as such, the colonists refer to the planet as footfall, in reference to where God, whoever or whatever they believe in in each instance, set foot on the planet and so marked it with their presence. The planet is home to communes and clusters of various peoples from all across known space, each representing various different spiritual faiths. Apparently, one of these groups has recently taken to committing acts of vandalism and are generally causing a nuisance of themselves. So the Federation asked Starfleet to send its nearest vessel, ours, to make a show of keeping the peace and hopefully making these people cease their disruptive activities before it causes a diplomatic incident among the numerous different polities and peoples on footfall. On a personal note, as a Bajoran and a person of faith, I find it difficult to believe that I could experience anything of this divine presence these people espouse, since the root of my faith lies on Bajor and the celestial temple not far from it. Still, since my father managed to get my sisters and I off of Bajor before the Cardassians occupied it, I have never felt the presence of the prophets. On my father's urging, I kept our traditions and practices, and do believe that the prophets have a plan for me. Still. It would be nice to travel to Bajor when I get the opportunity, just to be near the prophets in the Celestial Temple, to be able to feel that connection. In the meantime, I have to attend to another tradition, an apparently important one amongst our Denobulan crew members. As a highly social species, the Denobulans hold a great importance to celebrating the birthdays of their family members as a reaffirmation of their bonds. With no direct relatives amongst the crew, Lieutenant Natala has taken it upon herself and the other Denobulans to put together a celebration for a fellow crew member's special day. And it seems I'm more than a little late. So, we're going to switch over to the mess hall. Switch us over to lounge. And to... Party! As such, Commander Lenaris enters into the mess hall, which is actually been uh, is a part of the uh, enormous shuttle bay. It's been uh, converted to a large bar area with lots of um, tables and uh, stools and chairs and even has a, uh, a view looking out outside of the ship. Uh, Commander Lenaris enters and finds the captain, Commander Andrews, Dr. Bertram, and uh, Lieutenant Thazanan propping up the bar, waiting next to an enormous line of other crew members who are all lining up to give a an insectoid uh, ensign, a member of the... Um, uh, Zindi insectoid race various gifts the line is actually bigger than I've made out on this on this map here and uh, Lieutenant Natala is there at the uh, at the end of the line supervising the uh, the gift giving somewhere nearby Lieutenant Nova is busy jigging along to the music with a couple of other people who are busy uh, half dancing <laughs> And the quintuplets, the bravos, are currently being entertained by another Denobulan crew member. And that's the situation as we find ourselves. Commander Lenaris comes up and goes, Oh, Captain. Commando. Doctor. At which point the captain looks over and goes, Exo, I'm uh, not too late, I trust, says the commander. Upon which the captain goes, no, not really. So where are we up to? Uh, I make us, we're at gift number 43 out of 126. Wow. Gonna be a while then. And so I let you guys party hardy for a moment. 
So, uh, so if anybody else would, sorry, uh, go on, John. I, I talked over you there. <laughs> no, no. If, if anybody else um, has any um, interesting stories to tell of the time we've had so far, um, <laughs> just, just try trying to get more people to join in. Yeah, bye. <laughs> Scratch my ears again, and I will bite you, Lieutenant. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Lieutenant Kirst, uh, sorry, Ensign Kirst is a member of the Katians. Whereas uh, Natala is trying her best to encourage other people to get in on the uh, celebrating Ensign Natik's Hatch Day. How is, how is Ensign Natik feeling? <laughs> is he kind of, does, he look, does he look uncomfortable? Well, it's hard sorry, to tell they, with, uh, they with an insectoid. <laughs> His mandibles are generally clicking along uh, quite excitedly. Whether that's um, out of frustration or happiness or anything in between, you're not entirely certain. I must admit, I'm really impressed that our bartender's got four arms. He's, one of the, he's uh, actually got three because he's one of those guys, yes. As, as uh, yeah, from, from Webby has quite rightly too. pointed out, he is an Edosian. And that is Mr. Manoko, the bartender. When you said four, I thought we had Gorva. No. <laughs> Edosians have got um, two arms and one arm in there where their chest would be, and they've got three legs, so they've got two, four, one aft kind of thing. So they're very well balanced. And uh, Mr. Monoko is busy mixing drinks and handing them out, as you can imagine, at a rather rapid pace. Uh, Lieutenant Likud is propping up the bar trying to stay out of the festivities as much as he possibly can. I can't help but feel that seeing as um, I'm standing next to Sophia on the thing, I'm probably boring her to death with um, stuff like <laughs> the explaining about the um, genetically modified neosphagnum that has specific attributes that allows it to slow the decomposition of carbon emitting peat and help stave off dangerous greenhouse gas emissions from entering the atmosphere. <laughs> I'm going to make Lieutenant Fazanan have do a perception check to see if he can see... Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you can see Commander Andrews mouthing, help me. <laughs> hey, look! Sophia's brain is leaving her skull. <laughs> what, is, what is that? Insight and... Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> I suppose, yeah, it's going to be insight and command, I suppose. This is where he just rolls flipping two twenties, isn't it? <laughs> like, nope. A complication, like, a social norm has been uh, violated. One success. A complica there. complication. You accidentally say, "Oh, that's interesting. Tell me more." Damn it. <laughs> yeah, Andrews is sat thinking to herself, "Why is he looking? Why is he on my left hand side? Because I can switch off the right side of my body, so it just hears static." <laughs> Uh, yes, Lieutenant Thazanan does actually uh, catch wind of, uh, of Andrews trying to get his attention. Thazanan will wave politely and move over to the bar. <laughs> Hi! Yeah. Right, okay, so noticing that uh, Commander Lost has turned up, and we're like, Commander, the Doctor's got some fascinating discoveries about his moss. Perhaps you would be so kind as to enlighten the Commander Doctor. Uh, would you like another drink, by the way? I'll take whatever's going. If Doctor? that's... <laughs> oh, no, I, I find in the conversation much more stimulating than any drink. Okay, well, uh, I'll get you a good drink, Commander, and I'll be back shortly. Okay, I, I, st <laughs> I start explaining to the Commander about how where most mosses get the nutrients from the air, this particular moss seems to have somehow had its, for want of a better term to use a rather crude term, evolutionary path of uh, amended by the phenomenon, so it directly feeds on energy as opposed to the normal nutrients. This is also, and it's also starts about the mutated, kind of like tendrils that seem to be mutated versions of the roots that are normally used to clean to sort of rough and smooth surfaces. Fascinating, Doctor. <laughs> I'm going to. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, Doctor, look, Doctor looks around at everyone making their way away from me and, uh, and goes, <laughs> is, it, is this something I'm doing that's putting people off? No, it's uh, the crew who are at fault. Yeah. Uh, uh, Andrews will point out, 
Lieutenant, <laughs> Lieutenant the Tude uh, would be interested, Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> at which point, the Tude stops his drink halfway and just, like, <laughs> stares at you. <laughs> and the captain goes, Lieutenant, perhaps you would like to hear the Doctor's uh, analysis. <laughs> at which point, the Tude kind of then leans, at, leans back and looks up at the captain, but refuses to say anything. <laughs> Sure, whatever, says Latude. Oh, we can control the AI as well, fully. Do, 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 do. Um, <laughs> oh, um, I, I think as I've got this uh, random <laughs> fencing focus, mm -hmm. um, can anyone think of which crew crewmate might be like the only person who can who can get into Natala's head enough to get them exercising? So, who is the effectively fencing partner, fitness instructor for Lieutenant Natala? More than likely going to be Andrews. Okay. Because Andrews strikes me as the one who would want to stay martially competent. I think Nova would do it out of politeness, but just get her ass kicked every time. <laughs> yep. So there's, you know, you ha you have options there. Okay, cool. Just, just, just wanted to establish what other things happen in downtime. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, I've always pictured um, Andrews. Basically beating away at a uh, at a, at a kickback, um, which happens because none of her security staff want to actually spar with her anymore. Not <laughs> after the first time. Doctor Bertram remembers that day well. I'm sure, the proofs and ensign every now and again, and they just turn up at the medical wing. <laughs> <laughs> And that was the complication on Andrew's promotion. <laughs> <laughs> He's just standing there, just saying this to the air. <laughs> just talking to the chair. No, I probably engaged the computer and started explaining more stuff to it. <laughs> <laughs> Vazadan is drinking as loudly as he can to drown out the doctor. And in case any of you haven't already noticed, no, I am not uh, looking at the chat, I can't, but uh, there we are. My tech fails me tonight on that regard, I'm sorry. But someone else was going to say something rather quickly. It might have... Oh, just, just, just progressing the time with it. Gift number 63. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's an audible high-pitched clicking sound coming from, uh, from uh, Nadik. Um, it's you have to watch the you have to watch the antenna. The antenna give away a person's real feelings. Trust me, I'm an Andorian. I know. Quite. Does he have antenna? Yeah, Natik definitely. They have, definitely have antenna. I'm also going to ask Lieutenant Natala to give me an insight plus command check to see if you notice something. Oh, yes. Um, Natala suddenly notices that Ensign Fizal appears to be making overtures to the uh, the Bravo quintuplets. And um, since you've got two successes and uh, Denobulan females uh, are, are known to utter a very strong pheromone when they're yeah. in mating season, um, yeah, you're catching wind of that right now. <laughs> The Bravos, bless them, they have no clue what's going on and why she keeps uh, brushing up against them. But uh, the, the, bra the five Bravos are just there, just completely confused by the entire ordeal. <laughs> Mouse on a string. <laughs> Yay! Casual space racism! <laughs> um, is Fiesel currently fully married up and thus only looking for casual acquaintances? Well, she's only young, so yeah, it so looks like she might be yeah. in the running for uh, five new husbands all at once. Mm -hmm. On the plus side, I sense that she's having a good time, so we're all proved. <laughs> oh god, you're empathic, so it's going to be rubbing off as well. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> and Chris is also getting kind of like skinny cat senses as well. We're like, 
Oh god. <laughs> Funnily enough, uh, Ensign, Ensign Kirst uh, is actually a bit anxious when the topic of the mouse on a string comes up, mostly because it turns out that she stole the mouse from the reptilian enclosure. She couldn't bear the thought of the poor little thing being fed to the snakes. And the doctor's gone over to the captain in Lejude. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me you just looked that up on the internet and found something. What? Are you suggesting that I'm not, you know, naturally informed about the bosses? I want to know that you went to the trouble of going on something like Wikipedia to look up plants. Um, I, so I typed into Google, interest in scientific moss facts. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, I am giving you plus one on your reputation just for that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Have I got, um, is that balanced by a negative, um, reputation of anyone I'm telling these moss facts Oh, god, yeah. <laughs> your, your, your reputation with the rest of the crew is going down massively. <laughs> <laughs> However, that's it's more a social true. thing rather than your Starfleet reputation. So. Yeah, this, this, this is yeah. you know, amongst you know, Starfleet Medical, you are, you are known for a very specific field. Yes, yeah. they call him the Green Man. <laughs> yeah. Which is ironic because the moss that we've currently got that has the energy absorbing factor is actually a distinct shade of yellow. Actually, it's blue. Yeah, I was just saying that to see if you'd be paying attention. Aha. I'm glad that you were. <laughs> so, you must be very interested in another moss fact. Dot, dot, dot. Probably the nail cat. <laughs> <laughs> might need, uh, <laughs> might need Saurian brandy at this point. Anywho. Is there anything else anybody else wants to engage in whilst we're here? Purely as a <laughs> give the bottle. <laughs> Thazanan reaches forth and just grabs the bottle from behind the bar. It's all synthale, it's fine, right? <laughs> anything else anybody else wants to. Uh... It is neat, sir. Andrews, I can't help but notice, is way over the other side of the of the mess hall. <laughs> it's as far away from Doc Bertram as she can possibly get. Yeah, just staring, just staring out at the kind of half watching what's going on with the present giving, etc. But mainly just trying to avoid Bertram and staring out into space, like, please, please. You can no. join us on the dance floor. It's not much of a dancer. I could ask her, you know, I'm thinking of making a Botter a botanical vidcast. I think it'd be very popular and raise morale in the crew. Yay! Oh, no. Veg no, juice! Gonna be <laughs> Caval's like, nah, too much for me. I'm taking the bottle with me. <laughs> he's gonna try his chances with the Bravos as well. You know what's gonna happen though is that he's gonna get absolutely rat arsed drinking uh th drinking the the uh the neat romulan ale it's gonna wake up in sick bay with alcohol poisoning and the doctor's like ah good morning lieutenant have you heard about the past <laughs> he's just like tied up <laughs> alcohol poisoning i have a moss for that. <laughs> as it happens i do have a plant for that yes it's a weed actually it's actually a liverwort, but they're both in the bryophyte family. <laughs> okay, so all in all, um, yes, eventually the, 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 the celebration is rounded out by everybody, urged on by Lieutenant Natala, singing, um, singing Happy Hatch Day to Ensign Natik, and uh, everybody having a jolly old clap. Natik! I don't know. Nova gets the impression that he enjoyed the attention, and it was nice to know that his crewmates, you know, like him. It's not easy for a, a Zindi insectoid to form relationships with um, um, with 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 others, um, even with other Zindi, because you know there are there are <clears throat> excuse me there are di different species of Zindi. Um, 
but uh, Lieutenant Teague very much appreciates the, uh, the the effort everybody went to. He does not currently know that Lieutenant Natala actually um, bribed, threatened, coerced, and uh, otherwise um, negotiated her way around making sure everybody was here, but it, it, it's not for you, it's for Natik, apparently. So, with that in mind, unless there's anything else anybody else wants to do, we jump back to the bridge and we turn off the party music. That's gone loud. <laughs> I will turn that down then. You gotta take the part careful with me. <laughs> so, sometime later, you actually arrive in orbit around Ashgrave 4. So, uh, do, 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 do. your directives for this mission, which you can also find on the uh, the Navis character sheet itself, uh, uncover the source of this group and put a stop to their actions peacefully and with no loss of life, if possible. Keep the peace, ensure no other similar groups are likely to cause trouble, and to work diplomatically to ensure no further tensions escalate due to Federation interference. So, you are now in orbit around Ashgrave 4. The planet only has uh, one major settlement, and that's mostly built around the uh, starport itself which has a uh, landing platform for uh, mostly small craft, shuttle craft, runabouts, that kind of thing. There's no actual um, farming besides the basic kind that goes on. There's, there's very little in, in material... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not wealth. Um, there is not a wealth of materials on this planet, so it has no um, strategic value, it has no real um, mineral value besides the basic kind of stuff that's necessary for life, but most of the stuff that is necessary for humanoids to thrive has been brought on for off from off-world. Um, so yeah, the information on Ashgrave 4 is pretty much basic in that regard. It's a Federation colony. Technically, yes, it's a Federation-run colony, but there are a lot of different species that do have representatives there, including Klingons. Anything oh. else anybody wants to ask? So, yeah. <laughs> with it being at a piece, uh, being what has there been a change of situation that's encouraged the fact that we're now going to be sent as a peace envoy requirement? You would probably oh, going to have to ask uh, the uh, Starfleet commander in charge of the settlement for that kind of information. Uh, just out of curiosity, can I run a full spectrum analysis of the planet's surface, checking all of its energies, see if I can pick up on anything that might cause the divine feelings, or any signs of life away from the settlement that might be a rebel camp? Uh, you can certainly give it a go, but this is. If you isn't... find any more moss, I'm gonna stick you in an airlock. <laughs> I'm not looking for plants or the less than qualifiers for having life force. So that is going to be a hmm, control plus science check backed up by the ships. Uh, that'll be it. Sensors and science. So who wants to do the ship? Gareth, you tend to be the one who yep. does less unless the situation actually calls for it. So maybe okay. you can... Yeah, so that could be sensors and sides. Correct. Ooh, one success, I two helped. success. So that was two. That was one extra success more than you needed. Um, 
sensors indicate, yeah, there are there are scatterings of life forms across most of the uh, area around the main settlement. Um, they're in clusters, not terrifically isolated, but far enough from each other that uh, that um, obviously they're separate. Nothing As, that's like so far away that it's suspicious. Yeah, the, nothing that you can immediately see. I mean, um, the information on it suggests that there are a lot of uh, communes and the like. So there are like clumps of uh, of life forms that have obviously spread out from the uh, the, the the starport itself, just claimed a block of space for each other. As for um, any reason for the divine um, sensation, you find no real evidence. I mean, you wouldn't know what to look for. <laughs> so, no, uh, as, just, just if there are any readings, anomalous, yeah, if there are any anomalous readings, you're certainly not uh, picking up any. I don't think who on the crew would be potentially fairly religious. I don't know. Th- um, that there would be any impulse for that from the Tala at all. Um, well, Commander I mean, Lenaris is yeah. the closest since he's Bajoran. Yeah. I do believe uh, Kaval Thazanan has no no need for traditions such as uh, God worship. It barely qualifies as any kind of positive influence on people, I think. Hmm. I mean, whatever makes people happy, but... uh, Yes, it's it's often quite a backwards thing. Certainly in these secular times, uh, especially in the the more secular Federation, the Federation is supposed to respect all spiritual beliefs, Certainly. So it knows there are some. But of course, a lot of people, since science is the main um, approach for the Federation, it of course uh, is aware of spiritual practices and their importance to some people. It just doesn't investigate them more, f- more than a sociological, anthropological side of things. But, you know, that's not to say that there aren't religious people in the Federation. There are. Yeah. Is there any notes on any religions that frown at peaceful peace as such? So sort of like the Klingons you, you mentioned are, are down there. Do they see it more as a weakness if you show them kindness? So we should be more aggressive towards them when trying to be peaceful? Well, that's an interesting point. Klingons are at such a gathering. I thought Klingons weren't religious. Some Klingons might well be. I mean, the opposite. They Klingons have um, are very religious. Yeah. They do occasionally yeah. apparently kill their gods if they think the gods are being a bit uppity. Yeah, yeah. that's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hence asking if we're going to offend them by Wait, turning you... up like, <laughs> let's all be friends. But yeah, you, you have kind of like the cult, uh, not the cult of Kalis, but effectively the. Kalis is considered as the divine because he rose above and killed the gods, making him the immortal yeah. warrior. So there is the belief of Kalis is the ultimate warrior, etc. <laughs> okay. So, so yeah, K- the Kalis would be uh, the closest Klingons get, and like has been pointed out, they are a warrior culture, so they have a warrior messiah figure, as it is. But as you say, he got that way by killing their gods. Yes. So, so you know, because they so were there is. They were. Yeah, there, there's the there's the feeling among Klingons that gods are more trouble than they're worth. Um, but that's not to say that there isn't a very spiritual side to Klingons. So, anything else anybody else wants to have a look at while they've got this opportunity before they beat down? 
go. Okay, so now it comes to the matter of who's going to be on the away team. Now, Commander Lenaris is insisting he go on this away mission, especially because it's a diplomatic one. So uh, his talent for uh, diplomacy, which is one of his focuses, foci, um, would probably be advantageous here. So whether or not you are, what well, someone wants to take charge of Commander Lenaris, or are okay with me uh, keeping charge of him, I leave entirely up to you, folks. No, I don't think Andrews would want to go down. Okay. On this, do you want to take over the Lenaris? Uh, it depends on what everyone else is doing. I, th I think it, it means would be I'm interested. just swapping from one command role to another. It's like let someone else go to. I, I think with, with the anthropology focus and a general interest in what people makes what makes people tick, I think Natala would probably want to go. Okay. Um, are there any sort of like you know religious sort of movements to do with nature and stuff like that? Not overly druidic, but possibly nature-based stuff. You don't that... know. You haven't gone down there. In well, that case, yeah, I might go down there. <laughs> I do have balance of nature and technology as a as, aspect, so I feel it makes sense. Okay. So, so far we've got Commander Lenaris, Lieutenant Natala, and the Doc. Um, so yeah, basically Sean and Yan, who do, do you think Nova and Thazanan would go, or are we looking at maybe being a supporting character? I think Nova would volunteer purely on her abilities as an empath in reading people to help with diplomacy. Not to mention so, curiosity. Yeah, but she's going to try and hide that out of professional courtesy. <laughs> no, she's not. She's too honest. I just want to see people and want to know what's happening. <laughs> all right. So, Jan, it all comes down to whether or not you think uh, Caval would be interested in going down or not. Um, I don't think Caval would be interested. Okay then, so we're talking a supporting character, so <clears throat> who do we think? Um, so, we probably... so, Yan, so if Yan wants to take over Lenaris to have the command role be different than Webby, if you does want. that work out? And then, yeah. So Dave, what do you want to do? Intic. Cream to a birthday for us. Uh, which beta do you want? <laughs> Jenny, don't mind. I'll, I'll play whatever. I, I just think, yeah, the, the, the whole god premises thing really would not would get Andrews' back up a little. Okay, well, we're obviously talking a supporting character needing to be used for this, so. It now comes down to what the group think would be a, uh, a supporting character that would be useful. I mean, we've already got Natala who, uh, and Nova, who both represent the sciences. We've got Commander Lenaris, who is obviously the, the, the diplomat, the voice. We've got the Doc because of, you know, the Doc's curious. And... So if, we... if, if there's uh, trouble, uh, having a doctor around is always say... useful. So. We, we may need security just in case because there's vandals and they might get hostile, but... Um, so, is it more interesting to bring someone who is religious or someone who isn't? Is it more interesting to, 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 gra to grab like the most religious security officer we can imagine? <laughs> yeah. We've already got Lenaris, who's very religious. I think maybe somebody who's... who's... <laughs> well-versed in sort of cultural uh, cities. Well, anybody, if, if you're looking to take a security officer down, uh, most of the security officers are trained in, will be trained in, like, urban pacification, that kind of thing. Um, so, you know, keeping people calm and, uh, and, and talking to people. Like, uh, like when, when you see um, police officers break up an argument, you usually have you know, police officers, a general procedure for that kind of thing is to separate the the arguing parties and get everybody's story. So, um, you know, a security officer wouldn't be beyond the ability. They wouldn't be just muscle. They would have to have some training in being able to talk to people. 
as as an example. Likewise, a medical nurse. Um, but uh, yeah, I personally speaking, a security officer probably would be a good idea because then you've got a balance of the various different roles. But that's just my opinion. Do we just grab security Bravo, or do we want to do something different? I'm happy with security Bravo. Security okay. Bravo. Yep. Okay, let me. Uh, in that case, Alex is too busy with his new wife. <laughs> <laughs> You're my wife now, Dave. Uh, right, we're gonna have to find a. Uh, we're gonna have to find a first name for this particular Bravo. So if somebody wants to go on the um, the Betazoid male name generator, Bravo, Bravo. <laughs> Can't be what do we have so far? <laughs> Let me get a. Uh, name. Sorry, okay. So, uh, we look at male, aren't we? Male. Uh, okra. Spell that for Okin. me. Uh, o K R U H. Okru. If everyone's alright with that. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, oh, I could have had Tettle. Oh. <laughs> Tettle Bravo. Right, let's grab uh, his brother's icon. Do, 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 do. I can find that in Tokenizer. PCs and where is he? Bravo the engineer. Bravo the engineer. Where is he? Come on, Bravo. There he is. Boop. Funnily enough, it's also a red shirt. Well, I managed to get a red shirt, Bravo, this time. Awesome. So, this guy has been pre statted with the. Um, with the requisite numbers, we just have to use these species uh, abilities, which is insight, presence, and reason. So insight goes up, presence goes up, which is good because you'll need that, and reason goes up as well. So, uh, do, 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 all the stress, determination. Cool, there we have Bravo security. Okie dokie. So, Bravo being a security member is armed with Type 2 Phaser, Type 3 Phaser, Communicator and Tricorder. You guys all have basic um, basic uh, equipment. Let me give Commander Lenaris a Communicator and a Tricorder. There we go. Is there any other equipment people think they want to take? Now, Natala has did requisition uh, medical medical stuff previously, so I don't know if you want to spend momentum to uh, requisition medical stuff again, or if you want to leave that alone. I think we'll leave that alone this time. Okay, so let's we... dump that out of your inventory. Do we have something that could clean up graffiti and stuff? Or the phases? Phasers! Able to do that on a low setting? Phase of the graffiti. Yeah. No, I, I I doubt the technology doesn't exist on on the colony itself that they aren't they don't have the ability to scrape off um, graffiti. Uh, anything else anybody else has got on their person that they maybe shouldn't have or don't. Do we have anything equivalent to? Um... Pepper spray or tear gas. Um, that's called the stun Thunder setting, course. I believe. Hmm. Although yeah, grenades are good. I was gonna, I was gonna have a look actually. Character weapons: uh, pulse grenades. For um, crowd dispersal. If you wanted to requisition pulse grenades. Yeah, I think so. I'm just. We don't want to have any kind of uprising. 
Okay, I'm going to give Pulse Grenade to Bravo, and I'm going to give it to the Commander, since, you know, Commander. Unless anybody else wants Pulse Grenades. No, no thank you. I mean, I do, but I shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Nova starts to put her hand up, but then thinks better of it. <laughs> Or rather, Natala slaps her hand down, you know. <laughs> okay. Stop it. Any other preparations anybody wants to make before they are beamed down? Okay. Let's see then. Okay. Do 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 do. Let's take you off of the bridge and put you down on the planet's surface. Surface of the planet. Okay, I'm not going to change the map just yet, but um, so you arrive. Ooh, I've got nothing happening. Why is nothing happening? There we go. Um, you arrive on the planet in a uh, an open plaza. The place is kind of bustling at the moment, even though nothing is playing. Yay! I think maybe uh, I've suffered a sirenscape malfunction. If you can just give me a moment. Not getting any sound from there. At least I know that's working, so thank you whoever did that. Uh, let me just downplay everything. Spam so the doors! Spam the door! Spam the door! Spam all! Hold the door! Spam all! Spam all! One, two, buckle my shoe. Three, four, hold the door. There we are. There we are. Okay, so, um,. The area is full with all manner of shops selling religious trinkets and paraphernalia of every type and denomination. The people here seem calm and happy, and as you arrive, uh, you are greeted by uh, several people who offer you various uh, trinkets and blessings. You know, there is a huge variety of species here. Even though those that are known to not get on well, they seem to be interacting quite harmoniously. And this is probably to do with the incredible feeling that beaming down onto the planet has, and you feel it as soon as you land. For all of its barren landscape, the view around you is kind of breathtaking. And something about the place feels grand and humbling and inspiring all at the same time um, you you all feel it the moment you you land on the planet it is this overwhelming feeling of the, of the just well it's as if God is looking down on you with nothing but love and blessings. And uh, Commander Linaris, you know, it actually catches a breath in his throat as, as he arrives on planet. Because uh, Linaris can't... He, he feels like he's finally been touched by the prophets. That thing he's been missing all this time, he now feels like he's got it, and the rest of you find it very hard not to feel the same way. Uh, even Lieutenant Bravo, who is like the rest of his brothers, they're almost, they're not stoic, but they are kind of stony-faced, almost, because they're all sharing each other's thoughts and, and, and feelings at the same time, it becomes a little difficult to process what each one is individually feeling, but um, that the, the two Betazoids are definitely feeling this this overwhelming wash of presence uh, all over them. 
So for the Betazoids, it becomes very distracting. And extremely powerful. And it, this, this feeling is actually so powerful that you gain one momentum just by being here. So, is there anything anybody wants to do while they're here? No? Okay. Then I suggest you make for... The only thing, we, yeah, the only thing sorry, I would suggest is that we kind of like a general sensor scan. Yeah, I wanted to see whether, whether there is anything notable about just like whether it's the atmosphere or... Um, is this kind of usual um, breathable air? This usual light? Yeah. This this is a different kind of. Um, I mean, you said that um, Natala herself, being a scientist especially, doesn't have any particularly strong religious motivation. But all of a sudden, being here. Natala can start to, 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 to feel why people would follow the, the, the teachings of the Great Mother of the Denobulans. Um, likewise, um, both Bravo and Nova suddenly wonder if there is actually something behind the, 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 the elemental spirits that the, the uh, Betazoids used to worship, as well as the, the, the Holy Rings themselves. Um, Bertram's not beyond this either. What with the whole um, wondering about communication between, you know, the natural world and everything, you feel like as if there's a very strong connection to, well, you know, the the, the power of, of the great the greater power behind the universe. Almost, you know, you could almost you could definitely believe that there is, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A sense of balance. No, it's more like um, uh, the 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 idea of like the the god is behind everything. After all, there's there's a word for it. You know, there's uh, the the divine plan for everything. I'll look yeah. it up later. But that's you know, e even the the stoic scientists, the, the firm scientists of the group, are suddenly feeling like whoa. Maybe there is something to this after all, kind of thing. But um, yeah, the one feeling it most keenly, obviously, is is Lunaris. But feel free to take tricorder scans if you so wish. But I can guarantee you, what you find is normal breathable air. There appear to be no um, no microbes, no um, energy that you can immediately pick up unless somebody wants to give it a really big roll. I mean, just in terms of what would be rolling for this. The fact that the Federation are, have already set up an outpost here, though, would suggest that yeah. at least at some point somebody has come here and gone, I wonder what this is all about. And yeah. the fact that it's still an unknown I'd be interested to see what station is here and, and what recordings they've had over a longer period. Okay, well, you know, feel free to, uh, if you want to go with a... <clears throat> yeah, you've got Reason plus Science check to give it a go. I'm not going to tell you the, uh, the difficulty number. Two successes. Yeah, you you don't pick up any energy readings that would suggest um, that would suggest an influence. What what you do get though is that there is the presence of what was it? Gareth, you can probably remember this better than I can. In um, the I'm gonna cross franchise for a minute. Yep. In the five doctors, when we first yep. come across Peter Davison's doctor, they, they're visiting a planet where everything feels calm. 
and he said either yeah. it was the abundance of negative or positive ions. I can't remember which one. I think it's positive ions. Right. Because they tended to go with uh, science that gave a feeling of peace and serenity. Hmm. That's right. So, yes, there is a, a there is a slight there is an indication of uh, an abundance of positive ions, which maybe could contribute towards the the, the the peaceful feelings, but what could actually be causing the you know, God is here and God is looking at me with love and acceptance you, there's there's no obvious uh, no obvious sign of <laughs> Does anybody else want to try anything? Uh, were we given any sort of Contact like a security contact yes. or somebody to talk to about the. There is a main uh, administration building. I'll that's... make the suggestion of heading there so that we can maybe talk to people that have lived do with this longer. Okay. Let's roll them over to the main administration building. Oop, oop, oop. We've lost somebody. Who did we lose? People are wandering already, and it's not me. Or has it clustered you all? It's clusters. Cool. That's because of the wall. Nice. All right then. So um, you ask where to find the um, the main administration building, and you are given directions, and eventually you come across uh, this building here. And they are in front of the entrance door. And as you open the door, yes, there are a number of people in here, but uh, there is one lady behind the closest desk. She kind of leans around from behind the uh, the nearest, uh, well, her monitor, and goes, "Yes, can I help you?" Lieutenant Atala, just down from the Navis. Um, I was wondering whether we could speak about um, the recent trouble you've had with uh, saboteurs and such. Oh, thank goodness. Yes, please, come in. Right. Yes, thank you so much for coming. Um, my name is uh, Indira Chahal. I'm the Federation, well, commander in rank only here. Thank you so much for responding to the request. Right, um, where to begin? Well, um, we've had some trouble with a particular group of late calling themselves the uh, the voice of purity normally as you can imagine uh, the Federation takes a very hands-off approach with our administration here we don't want to get too involved in everybody's spiritual activities everybody should be free to follow their own spiritual path as long as it doesn't interfere with anybody else's as such we have rules and regulations here about uh, no one spiritual group is allowed to uh, build a, a church or other place of worship only non-denominational small areas are allowed to set up uh, modest um, altars and, and the like so that no one establishment can be seen to be building a, a bigger building than anybody else and then everybody gets into competition trust me that happened once and you don't want to have seen the results but nevertheless for a long time we have actually had more or less peace and harmony amongst everybody here and then uh, <clears throat> well then Annalisa Duval came which is a shame because I quite liked Annalisa. Um, I should clarify, Annalisa Duval is the um, de facto head of the Voices of Purity. 
They were just another group until sometime recently when they all of a sudden declared that their way was the true way and when everybody just ignored them they started to make demonstrations out in front of local businesses and in the main hub these were able to be uh, dispersed easily as most people just thought they were others who were just trying to shout about their faith louder than everybody else but not getting noticed or taken seriously seems to have really put the voices of purity's backs up they started actively preventing people from getting into their businesses when that didn't work they started setting up demonstrations rallies protests and now that that hasn't worked they seem to have graduated onto vandalism i really need for the peace to be kept here on uh, on footfall so before this gets out of hand i would really appreciate it if you could locate annalisa's group and well, basically tell them to stop um in your opinion which groups are most likely to take the bait and compete? Well, not to point any obvious fingers, but obviously the Klingons would be the most aggressive to defend their faith. The Andorians are pretty staunch about their way of, uh, way of life too. A great many have spiritual beliefs that you find pretty much anywhere. They're all about being treated the way you expect to be treated and everybody gets along fine most religions have a common core set of beliefs where it's defined about what individual cultures value as being those traits that define productive members of society but the ones most likely to defend themselves will probably be the Klingons, the Andorians Maybe some of the others with more aggressive tendencies. But overall, I think you'll find nobody here likes being told that their faith is wrong and they should change it. And that's pretty much the situation we have going on here at the moment. Has, uh, has this group published any kind of manifesto or religious writings or doctrines? Well, they tried, but of course that's one of the big no-nos around here. To be actively proselytizing your faith is restricted. You're certainly allowed to celebrate your faith and to tell about your faith, but to otherwise berate and badger people into trying to adopt your faith is definitely out of line here. That's not to say that the Voices of Purity didn't try. They did have a manifesto. Do you have any, do you have any examples of this publications? Um, yes. She steps over to her desk and um, brings out a data pad and uh, loads some information onto it and then walks back to yourselves and hands the pad over. As you can see, it's fairly standard stuff. They claim to have received messages from some kind of divine source. This divine source preaches that everybody should be unified in their method of faith, which includes a simple lifestyle, living cleanly, having as little to do with technology as possible, but not to the point of not utilizing it in a sensible way to keep yourself safe and healthy. And uh, basically adhering to a set of protocols that basically announces one as being worthy in their faith. Pretty much standard stuff. The only difference here is that they say that everybody has to conform to their ways, otherwise they risk some kind of divine wrath. You said uh, previously you indicated that I think you used the word you liked Annalisa Duval until the recent incidences. Is that correct? Correct. So, um, 
Sorry, go on. Was she... What were, as far as you know, her religious leanings prior to these instances? Was she with the Voice of Purity and it was a more reasonable group? Or did she have different ones and kind of joined the Voice? She was... She was an agnostic when she first came here. She's from a wealthy merchant family. So she came here as a tourist, like we get so many. But, well, like every tourist, when she arrived here, she felt the same feeling of the divine, which I'm sure all of you felt when you arrived here. I mean, I've been working here for the last couple of years, and I can't pretend that I don't feel this thing, but I have a job to do, and that's to keep everybody happy. But that was easy until Annalisa's group as far as I'm aware, Annalisa joined with a certain group who had pretty basic leanings, very much in the realms of what you've just read in their manifesto. Living simply, but not disusing technology. But she is a very charismatic and intelligent woman. I mean, I've spoken to her on a number of occasions. I like her, and she's entirely reasonable. But when it comes to what's going on, she and the rest of her group insist that what they're doing... It's supposed to be for the betterment of everybody else. And I so far have been unable to persuade her that it's doing more harm than good. You say she came as a tourist. Correct. Is there any record of what her itinerary would have been when she was a tourist here? Pretty much like everybody else. Um, she came here, she had a walk around the main markets, um, there were a number of gorges and ravines, a lot of mountains, pretty standard stuff. She didn't go anywhere that any of our tourists haven't themselves been. She just decided to stay and become a permanent resident rather than go back with her parents to wherever it was they called home. I think it's, um, I think they actually live on Earth. But Annalisa Commander, decided to stay. Commander, are you wondering whether there is a common location to these converts? Is there an exact date when the Voice of Purity registered? Um, they didn't as such so much register their, um, their beliefs as they just decided to call themselves the Voices of Purity. That was about a month ago. And no record of them before that from any visitors or uh, residents? Not to my knowledge. not being very helpful, I know, but I'm going on the only knowledge I do have, which is what I've presented so far. Have they set up a commune? Um, they did, yes, but I'm not sure if anybody's there anymore. Last time I went out to the commune or sent someone out there, the commune was deserted, but I don't imagine they've gone far. Do you tell us the location of that? Oh, certainly. Um, it's just past the Minus Mountain range. There's an old mine set up there to try and see if there are any valuable minerals. And as such, uh, the mine was abandoned. Uh, yeah, that was the base of that mountain range was where the Voices of Purity set up their commune. Um, she... Uh, she updates the pad she gave you with the location. It's not that far from here, so... It shouldn't take you long to get there, but as far as... how to find them... I'm not sure, sorry, you'll just have to look.
Are there any other notable members? Not really. I mean, if they are looking for converts, there must be a way for people to contact them. Yes, you would think so. They do appear. And of course, there's the vandalism that occurred last night and has occurred for the last couple of nights. But they just turn around and go back to wherever it is they came from. We don't... We per- a- we don't actually have that large security force. We've never needed one. Is there any sort of pattern to the places that are targeted for vandalism? Sadly, <clears throat> no. Opportunity more than anything else. They turn up, they use bats and um, anything they find to hand and smash windows. Or break in doors. Has there been an escalation of events? Obviously, it started with one window being broken, then two, then a door, then... Is there any signs of assault that's gone on, etc.? Or is it still just vandalism at this moment in time? Well, that's where we get very interesting. According to our security footage of the, uh, the incidents, they seem to have gone out of their way to avoid injuring anybody. Is it possible that they that they have that they believe this threat is real and not from them? That they really believe that there is some wrath that they are warning people against? I can only imagine that that must be the case. I mean, Annalisa, when I talked to her, she seemed bent on taking this course of action because it saves people. That's what she said. Words to that effect. So, some threat, real or imagined, that they are trying to protect people from through forced conversion. And of course, we can't be having that. I mean, like I said, they've avoided hurting anybody, but your point is well made. Escalation. If they keep... If they keep this up, then how much time is there until they eventually do? I'd like to think that Annalisa and her voices of purity won't go that far, but I don't think I could guarantee they wouldn't, and that's why I need help. (coughs) Excuse me. Really, any and all assistance you could do. Maybe if it was just to show them that Starfleet are here and are looking over the situation, maybe that might scare some sense into them. I don't know. But it's all I know to try. I'm willing to go on whatever you recommend at this point. If we knew the nature of the threat, that would make it easier for us to look for it, see if there is anything to it. Something that would... What would leave people alone if it knew that they believed in something something specific? Be a, a psychic threat? You would have to ask them. I don't know. Not being a, a man of faith, but would it not be divine intervention, perhaps? Just putting it out there. That everyone here feels that the divine is calling to them. But what happens if it's their divine that's spoken to them that says that everyone needs to leave this planet? I can't answer that, I'm afraid. If everyone were to leave, who, um, and so long as everyone knew that everyone else was also having to leave, do you think that's a possibility? 
in if that is the solution that needs, that it needs to be. Are you saying I should seriously think about evacuating the planet? It needs to be discussed as, a, as an option in case um, things will. There is no other answer. Um, at <coughs> least as an outside possibility, I, I know these sort of things take time. Well, yes. I mean, we don't even have enough ships. Unless your ship can cater to a couple of hundred people. So that might be our first um, issue, is that in the event that we needed to evacuate the planet, we would need a, a, a certain amount of assistance. Uh, particularly if we wanted everyone to leave at the same time so that no one felt that they were being left uh, forced off without somebody else being forced off. Well, like I said, I have some staff, but not that much staff. We don't really have a much of a security force to speak of at all, so... Um, I can start putting things in motion if you think it's entirely necessary. I think that's a dangerous course of action, though, because if, if we start uh, doing this, then it would be as if we give greater credence to their views than to the other people who are clearly very happy to still remain on planet. Your commander does make a very good point. I, I, I agree with the commander. I, I reckon keep it as a back burner from my, uh, my experience. But it definitely needs to be a consideration. Alright, so... I think I, I think our main course of action, Commander, is we head to the location, their last known location. See what we yeah, can find. I think, yeah, I think the priority is to make contact with them because we don't know what they want. Um, or the finer details of what they want. Um, and we need more information. Alright, well, while you're gone then, I will start looking into implementing emergency evacuation procedures. Well, and here I thought this was going to be an easy job. Serves me right for requesting this posting, I suppose. Well, um, good luck. Like I said, Annalisa is a very smart, charismatic woman. If you can persuade her, then you'll have had far more luck than I have. In the meantime, I will start looking at what you recommend. Thank you, and good luck. Thank you. Okay. Commander, would it be worth us potentially requesting additional security personnel just to be uh, in the vicinity if something were to start going down? Um, I, I don't think we should be seen to be escalating the situation. Uh, let us see what we find on fact-finding mission first. Uh, we can have personnel standing by, but I think a sudden increase in personnel on the ground, especially security personnel, would send the wrong message. Did you want to go to the abandoned previous location first? Or wait around in the marketplace for somebody to show up? I think um, just waiting around is not a productive course of action. We can approach uh, some of the people in the marketplace, I think, uh, and see if anybody has been approached. Like I said, if they want to spread their word and convert, they must be contacting people uh, and they must provide some way for people to contact them so I think we can canvas the market uh, see who has had contact with them is, is there any way in which we can contact them uh, based on messages or notes or anything they have left and if that fails then we can proceed to their previously known location okay 
That's a very firm plan of action. I like it. What do the rest of you think? Yep. Sounds, sounds yes. logical to me. Yep, sounds like it worked to me. Okay. Start well, the people stick a phaser in their face and go, Do you know these people? I'm <laughs> sure. <laughs> you have an operator? <laughs> Talk! I mean, it could just work and just start in sense, like, either hostility or an ease of one people, because that should be pretty easy to pick out in, in a crowd full of happiness. Why is this, like, really happy planet, like, ominous music? <laughs> <laughs> it's not ominous, it's peaceful. You know, it's, no, it's, it's, def it's definitely not. If it was peace, right, if, if I was playing Sophia at this moment in time, her heckles would be flipping on edge. Very <laughs> twitchy. Uh, it's almost like I'm playing on your paranoia. <laughs> in any case, uh, Lieutenant, sorry, Commander Lenaris can feel free to let's go with presence and command with a focus on diplomacy to see if you can coax up some people to give you some general information. <clears throat> this will be like difficulty. One, one success will be enough to get people to talk. Chris and some command. Yes, please. With a focus in diplomacy. Okay. Well then. Do I you just want insulted to... somebody? <laughs> <laughs> may have just called that Klingon uh, a fool. Uh, do you want to spend momentum to reroll that? Yes, yes, I think so. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> One momentum down, off you go, reroll results. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Whoa, there we go. <laughs> no, you completely misunderstood me. What I actually said was. <laughs> yes, yes. I said, do you know where this group was? Not what Cadus was a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my Klingon's a little rusty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that's what that means in Klingon. I am sorry. Right, yeah. So we went from no successes and a complication to four successes. So, wow. Great success. <laughs> so, yes. Commander Lanaris, himself being a man of faith, um, is, finds it very easy to relate to a lot of these people, and therefore, <clears throat> excuse me again, uh, manages to strike up conversations with them a lot easier. Um, the general impression you get is that the voices of purity started off just like anybody else, and just like everybody else, they thought everybody should listen and give their faith a chance but then um, they obviously started escalating things um, the last anybody heard was that they came from that old commune that used to be um, a couple of kilometers away from that old disused mine the nobody is sure where they are now the fact that uh, one one in particular merchant um, that you spoke to that you speak to <coughs> excuse me um, says that he was just walking home when they were busy smashing things up and when he asked them to, to stop they they almost seemed apologetic and you know they put down their weapons to make sure that they didn't present a threat to this man but they did go on to cause a lot more damage before they uh, before they split. So it's 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 strange vibes. Everybody seems very uncertain about what to make of them. It's like um, they're definitely troublemakers. Their attacks, they're tactical and either thought out or. They're part of a plan rather than something that that, that is as if they're, they're staging their own their own protest. They're, they're not protesting; they're staging a protest. That's it's all a part of someone's plan. Okay. 
So yes, it looks like uh, Lieutenant Natal is stroking her chin in thought at all of this. <laughs> I sense a dastardly scheme. But yes, that's the general feeling you get from pretty much everybody you speak to. Is that, you know, they're, they're, they're worried about escalation, but at the same time, everybody here has got spirit their own spiritual beliefs, and they've largely been respected up until now. And now you've got this upstart group coming in, telling everybody, stop what you're doing and do what we do, because you're wrong. You know, it's got more than a few people's backs up. And now they're coming in and smashing up property. Yeah, they're taking pains not to hurt anybody, but... You know. Haven't but, identified any collaborators, I mean... No, there are no collaborators that you, that you find. I mean, with four successes... <clears throat> yeah, people are worried um, that things will get out of hand if nothing is done. But it's not like they're going to change the way they they, they practice their own religions just because somebody else starts smashing up a couple of shops. So yeah, you find no evidence of anybody trying to actively deceive you or try and um, point you down a wrong avenue. Everybody here so far seems pretty honest. Honest in their concern. Do you think they didn't go far and they just moved into the mine itself? It's possible, I suppose. They may have even uncovered something in the mine itself, which is what triggered this. Yeah. So perhaps we should head to the camp and check it out. Okay. What would you like to do now? Then we should not to head over to the camp? Yeah, go and head over and see what we can find at the camp. It would give us a chance, even if they're no longer there, it would give us a chance to check what conditions they were in the beginning, to actually get an understanding potentially of the people that were there. Okay. I think we can definitely see if there's any kind of scientific um, information that might help us identify their change in behavior. Okay. Okay. Into the wilderness. So, yes. Um, <clears throat> are you walking there, beaming there, what? I think we walk there and look for any signs of vandalism, trouble, movement. Yeah. Okay. So also, we can pay attention to our general feeling of well-being and see if that changes with uh, distance to the marketplace. Or is this general feeling of well-being constant throughout the journey from marketplace to the mine? Okay. All right. Well, <clears throat> the uh, the location you were given is uh, several kilometers outside the main colony so you do take a you do have to take a bit of time uh, walking it but it doesn't feel like a chore to walk in fact you can't help yourselves but use the opportunity to admire the the the, the, the breathtaking views you're given of the, the the mountains and the wilderness vistas that you're uh, that you're that you're um, experiencing as you travel, the 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 overwhelming feeling of the divine that you felt does not change. It seems to be constant uh, as you keep on moving. You eventually come to uh, a, on the hor near horizon. You see a set of rather simple uh, simple wooden buildings that have been uh, set up in a in a cluster which would match with the coordinates that you were given you find the place um, abandoned the buildings are they're not they're they're fabricated buildings but they, it looks like they were fabricated by hand 
so they're all um, wooden uh, wooden buildings. Obviously, there are no trees on this planet, or at least no um, no regular trees, as far as something from like Earth is concerned. Uh, there's sh there's plenty of shrub, so there's very little native flora that grows terribly high. <clears throat> um, so it stands to reason that these people um, imported their uh, their materials and then decided to build uh, build these uh, these these buildings based on you know regular regular construction. What is the plant life like on this planet that we see? Fairly sparse, but um, it's the usual kind of hardy desert plains type plants that you expect to come across. The, the low to the ground, um, thick, dense leaves, some of them a little spiky, kind of kind of jobby. I test a theory by asking you to explain further and see if that still feels quite joyous and godlike. <laughs> what was that, sorry? I want to test a theory by asking you to explain further to see if it still feels joyous and godlike. <laughs> Right, so you're testing whether or not this joyous feeling is maintained even when Dr. Moss goes on one of his <laughs> rants about how great plants are. Yep. I wish you had called him Dr. Moss as I was drinking then. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but oh, Bravo hasn't had the joy of Dr. Moss. <laughs> um, <about> to... <laughs> <laughs> well, um, interestingly enough, <laughs> While deserts are often thought of being barren lacelands, they're actually, if you look closely enough, biologically rich habitats with a vast array of different types of animals and plants that have adapted surprisingly well to the harsh conditions there. In this case, most of what we see are the um, largely somewhat spiky but not quite cactus-like shrubs. More like a um, general sort of like um, ground like rockery rather than the standard desert fare that we get. You do feel your mind wandering as it usually does when Dr. Bertram launches into one of his <laughs> bot botanical lectures. <clears throat> but that doesn't mean the feeling of, uh, of, of general divine presence has gone away. Mm, well, lost feels... I still thank him politely. <laughs> what was well, that? Lost feels very... Commander Loss feels very generous towards the doctor and he says, Doctor, and, and what kind of animals do you think would be consuming these plants, if any? <laughs> um, the doctor starts uh, talking. Well, uh, on this particular planet, I haven't actually studied the plants and had a look around for... In fact, as you asked, can the doctor actually start looking around to see if he can actually get more details on the biosphere of this um, desert-like planet? Absolutely. Uh, whips out the tricorder and start looking around both for plants and potential sort of like and, uh, signs that animals have been feeding. <laughs> <laughs> Set faces to burn. Um, yeah, there's very little in the way of, of, of native animal life um, yeah. due to the s scarcity of, you know, edible foods. There are a couple of yeah. rodent-like creatures here and there which have obviously developed um, burrowing uh, as a means of staying out of the uh, you know, the, the harsh not too harsh, but the, the inhospitable environment. So you're talking rodents yeah. with um, tough skin, wiry fur, long claws for, for digging. Mostly, pretty much um, herbivores. <clears throat> but their numbers are few and far between. Any sign of the Fade Desert Tortoise? The Fade Desert Tortoise. If there were such a creature, it's not here currently. Uh, strange. During the temperature, no matter how high, hit up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit, not Celsius. I'm using the traditional method. But they can uh, stay still for a long time and then actually collect up moisture over certain holes they tend to negotiate around at a, their typical slow pace. And I start talking about desert tortoises. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Funnily enough, everybody else is starting to think about digging holes at this point. <laughs> what they intended to fill them with. 
I was going with themselves, but now I'm wondering if it's one single pole <laughs> that's six feet straight down, but I don't know well, anymore. There are certain animals that actually dig shallow holes to act at certain points in certain deserts as moisture traps. Now you really want to dig one hole for him. <clears throat> no, I'm, 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 I'm. Ah, Dr. Bertram, please hold this grenade for me. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. In Bertram, seconds I should do it. <laughs> Dr. Bertram, I think I, I dropped I something that, down can... this hole. Could you lean down and have a look for me? <laughs> I scanned the hole with my tricorder without bending over. <laughs> And before I get dragged along in that particular comedy tangent... <laughs> yes. So, there's obviously no body about. Um, simple living was the, uh, the thing here. There is evidence of um, a couple of technological... Um, what's the word I'm looking like? I'm not good with words tonight. Luxuries, okay. I suppose, is, is the thing. You know, there's... There, there are showers set up, sonic showers mostly, because, you know, it's it's a bit dry in this place. So um, there are a couple of rep that they what look like spaces that were taken up with replicators that look like they were the the low the low battery powered jobs that um, survivalists will tend to tend to purchase. You know, in case of emergency, kind of kind of replicators. Um, but mostly it seems that they were trying to uh, live off the land as much as they were. So there are a couple of areas where it looks like they tried cultivating um, certain plants, a lot of which look like they came from off-world, because, uh, including some soil that came from off-world, because the place is obviously quite plains-like and, and dry. But without somebody to maintain the plants, a lot of them have ended up shriveling up at this point. Do we know Aww. what uh, used to be mined over here? Uh, you don't. But last year, I remember being told um, nothing of value was found in the mine, so the mine itself was abandoned as a lost cause. So, anything else you'd like to do while you're here? Okay, if Can nothing we... else. Sorry. We're just looking, looking for what, what isn't here anymore, I suppose. So uh, that's going to be, yeah, scanning for bioscience. So, uh, yeah, you can either call up to the ship and get the ship to do it, or if you want to do the job yourselves, you can uh, scan for life signs here. That'll be a control plus medicine check using tricorders so I'm happy to assist difficulty one so whoever wants to be the primary maybe the doctor uh, yeah I was just to say I'm pretty decent with control and uh, medicine so yeah and Tyler can aid and thus will allow you to ignore the first complication oh hello well, Natala goes all in with helping out. Actually, Doctor, these are the buttons you should press. For an optimised scan. Uh, all right. I had, had it set to moss again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, silly me. I was scanning for plants. Yeah. Yeah. Why is it always set to liverwort? Uh, I got one in addition to Natala's two. Yep, so that gives you one above what you needed, which earns you one momentum, which gets you up to the max. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah. You detect life signs not far from your position, and they seem to be clustered in a group at the base of the mountain, which was where the mine apparently was. Okay. However... Oh, it seems what you're, you're, you're getting with two successes rather than the uh, actually hold on. you got three successes overall yep. so you you got one success over what you needed so you can spend that extra momentum that you get for free on obtain information if you wish uh, having it's worth it we're at yeah. work, so. yeah. yes. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking one thing is um, if we've got the initial information, there is a cluster near that area, but people have said that it seems to be abandoned. Part of me is wondering, did they just retreat deeper underground into the mine and maybe most people explore? Yeah, that's, that was my thinking as well. Yeah. So the question you're going to ask me is... Um, unless anyone else has any ideas, I'm thinking... Do the scans indicate the there may be life forms um, some distance uh, beneath the actual surface level, deeper into the mines, um, or potentially? Everyone all right with that question particularly, or did anyone else have any observations on that? I think, um, given that that's just asking, will you um, reinforce our own theories? I don't know whether that's the right, right direction to go with right. it. Um, Simpler thing would be if there any signs of where they went would be the yeah um there is a oh, um I, I I've got studious for spending one more moment mental to obtain information you may ask one additional question okay so, so you've could... got the ability to ask two questions yeah cool um the other one I'd probably go with is that are there any signs um of the reason they chose this location in the first place. Okay, so what I'm getting is the first question will be, are they underground? And the second question is be, why Why did they choose this location? Yeah. Yep. Were you going to add anything, Jan? You were just about to speak, weren't you, as well? No, I was, uh, I was thinking about the, the underground, so can we establish the depth at which they are? Okay. Yep. So is everybody all right with those two questions, then? Yep. I am. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, then. Answer to the first question. Uh, yes, they are underground. However, the small size of the group and the natural deposits in the rock uh, make it hard to accurately determine their exact location and therefore their exact depth. The answer to the second question of is there a reason they chose this exact location, there's nothing obvious that suggests it. No. Other than distance from everybody else. Okay. Alrighty. With this information now in your possession, what would you like to do? So, I think my working theory is that this was just a regular group like any other but then um, with the arrival of uh, what a name now uh annalisa duval. Somebody, annalisa duval somebody went into the mine and discovered something there which changed the dynamic of the group it's possible but you no, at least I'd, have a direction now. I'd probably agree with you on that running theory, Commander. It seems logical. Commander Chahal did indicate the uh, and release of the wall and went some sort of almost like a personality change of some to some degree. What she was saying. Oh. It would have to be a. Uh, if they made some sort of truly significant discovery or something, could be one explanation for it, perhaps. No, I'd, I'd, I'd hoped you wouldn't have triggered my paranoia by saying a personality change. We did have a debriefing a short while ago about um, uh, body body changing. Uh, we can't let fear of the unknown. Um, direct our thoughts. We have to think of the long term. We need to convert all possible information and deal and sort out what is true and what is false. Okay. What would you like to do now? I think we will have to go investigate the mine. Um, As we get closer the... to... Sorry. No. No. I was thinking maybe if we can get the Navis to do some additional scans, if possible, to try and establish the structure of the mine, uh, potentially. 
Okay. Um, the empaths in the group, do you have any advice to us for, I don't know, centering our sense of self? I imagine that you must be at, at times overwhelmed by the experiences of others around you, and thus would have a better experience of um, maintaining your own personality. I'm afraid I can't really help much with that one because I tend to lose myself in it more than focus on myself because I enjoy it. Uh, we are bravo. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, and soon you will be Bravo too. <laughs> yeah, in in, ser yes, in a serious note, is that um, yeah, the, the the bond that uh, we share as the, the Bravo quintuplets is um, kind of unique for Betazoids. So uh, it's difficult for us to not be centered because we're constantly centering each other. Okay. The um. Yeah, so basically, in game terms, um, what it comes down to would be your level of your command discipline would be the best expression of your ability to maintain your sense of self. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that someone with a command of one uh, has trouble hanging on to their sense of self. It just means in situations like that, they are they are less strong of a personality that they... They're more susceptible to external influences. Yeah. Uh, just on that, uh, Nova is going to start monitoring people's surface thoughts and feelings a bit more closely as we get closer to the mind, just in case there is something that's affecting their sense of self. Okay. So she can give an early warning. Okay, okay. Well, luckily, uh, Commander Lenaris has got really high <laughs> command. So, uh, even though Commander Lenaris is obviously internally conflicted at the moment, and an empath and a telepath would be able to pick this up as a surface thing, because, um, like I noted at the beginning in his first officer's log, Commander Lenaris has never actually personally felt the connection to his religion. And now all of a sudden he's feeling it. Here, in this place, this place that is not Bajor. So internally this is causing Commander Lenaris a lot of problems. Um, but such is his level of self-control that he's choosing to focus on the mission and is, you know, therefore thinking more clearly, more logically by placing his thoughts about the mission at the forefront. That's not to say that none of you, the others, are having similar problems. And the fact that Natala brings up, you know, you, is there a way for me to center my sense of self that seems to suggest that, you know, Natala's also having problems dealing with this whole presence of the divine issue, which makes sense because she's never had it. Yeah. None of you have. Uh. <clears throat> for the for the Betazoids, this is also an unknown feeling. Because even though the Betazoids themselves are used to being able to sense thoughts and emotions from other people and therefore are more familiar and comfortable with it. There's this now, this extra layer on top of everything that's just there, shining bright above everything else. So, uh, yeah, just to clarify that little little nugget. I think the nearest thing that Tala's usually religious about is the ship and its crew as, a, as an entity. Yes. I think she, she venerates the idea of crew. Yes, which she would, because Denobulans require social grouping. Um, you know, that's the way they've evolved. So Denobulans, if when they had a religion, it was more than likely a a familial, a, you know, a, a religion of families, a family of gods. 
suggesting there's a matriarch and a patriarch at the head of it. Mm -hmm. um, so there is very much the feeling of you know the, the divine father and mother that were you know the the, the, the birth of every the, the place where everything else was born from here. But um, yes, Natala herself, I I concur, has had the her, her general veneration for her crew as her family is what keeps her rooted because as a denobulin she needs that anywho <clears throat> I'm waffling a bit now so I'm going to draw back on the waffle just a little bitty bit unless anybody else has anything they want to add or need want to ask no okay mm -hmm. so a little bit of time later as you reach the foot of the mountainside you discover what used to be a looks like the course of a now dried up river <clears throat> as such there are larger there is larger vegetation but the thing that strikes you most is the large wooden fence is now within view. Does the fence look like a recent construction? Fairly recent, yes. It certainly doesn't have any indication that it's been there long enough to get weathered as much as the other one did. You have control over your characters, so feel free to move around if you want to. I wonder if I uh, suppose we're still looking at this not going to be a firefight, if possible. Um, most certainly, we do not want to engage in any kind of aggressive actions. Okay. Alrighty. Well. Proceed on. Do, 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 do. Are we coming? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he was having trouble uh, holding and dragging the icon. Now the gate should be open for you to be able to see inside. And you see what we, we see. Step... What was that? Sorry, right, we can probably before we step inside completely. We can probably just call out um, to announce ourselves. Okay. Yep. You can certainly hear the echoes of your voice traveling down the uh, the the opening in the cavern, but uh, you don't at the moment get any response. Hello. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, exactly. So that's definitely going to have been followed up by Echo. <laughs> Marco. <laughs> oh. Hello. <laughs> we are Bravo. <laughs> A whole horde Bravo. of Bravos come out of the cavern. Like they were waiting for you this entire time. <laughs> oh, God, it's the Gary Vault. Gary. <laughs> Gary! All right. So as you get into the compound, you see pretty much what you see. The place is pretty simply set up, but the vast majority of the buildings and stuff out here, the uh, little fire pit with chairs around it notwithstanding, appear to be more where um, they store things. And it's at this point that <coughs> your tricorders start to be... As all of a sudden, you detect energy readings. So, anybody who wants to can make an insight plus science check, please. Difficulty yes, one. Sir. Yeah, Bravo's going to use his tricorder. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, holy mama. Look at that. 
Yeah, all right. Hey, blimey. <laughs> Everyone whips out their tricorders. <laughs> I don't want hey, to be guys, left out of this. Like, <clears throat> guys, how many got? We've got two, four, six, uh, eight. We've got eight questions to ask. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're eight over them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Is, is there any sign of sort of living activity like uh, campfires? Well, looks like there's a campfire over there. But recent uh, domestic activity, cooking right. and so forth. So question number one, is there sign of recent activity in this camp? Yes. There we go, that's one question down. Seven um, left. Energy readings, uh, what are we picking up? What are you picking up? The energy yeah, what kind reading, of reading? What kind of energy? is of a type that it does not conform to anything in your tricord or therefore your ship's database. Is it in the form of, is it in the form of um, waves, radiation, or sort of particulate? Hold on to that question, Sean. I'll get to Sir John's first. Uh, is it in any particular shape or form? Now, I'm not clever enough in science to be able to maybe give that an answer that conforms to what it actually is. So... Just techno babble it, make shit up. Make I am just going to say going that the nature of the energy signature is highly unusual and seems to be coming from everywhere around you. Okay. And as far as your tricorders can scan. What was your question, um, Sean? I've just been answered in that one. It was going to be what the source, but I suppose I could change that now to is it potentially harmful in that it's set off the tricorders? It, is it potentially harmful because it's set off the tricorders? In its current state, it does not appear to be a danger to you. Next question! Four left. Is unless, it worthwhile... This is, oh, sorry, you're going to save some first, yeah. I was just saying, unless you want to leave it there. <laughs> with four questions remaining. But no, you obviously have one, so... Uh, my... I, uh, I don't know if it's a, a question well, from our list, but I... Do we feel differently about the planet, or has our feeling of general, sort of divine over what's changed? Ooh. Good question. Hold on then just a moment. Has your general... Right, right, right. <clears throat> As far as Commander Linaris, Lieutenant Natala, and Dr. Bertram are concerned, no, you're still feeling exactly the same effects that you did before. What was the next question? Was that another question I didn't quite hear? Well, that opens another question of what you said uh, there. Is... See what so I the question now, right, so, so the, my question now is, what a bravo and Nova feeling, which is different from before. Okay. The difference here now is that as well as this overriding uh, feeling of the divine, there's now a localized presence that you can definitely detect, and as you sit there trying to comprehend it, you get stronger and stronger feelings of... Ooh. Hostility, anger, hatred, any any negative emotion, and coupled with the intention to basically attack. And so the wrathful being you, we're worried about. Leaves you with one question left. More of a question to the group, but is it worthwhile asking the navis to, uh, to undertake detailed, continual scans of the area? 
and deep see if they can also and also do yeah deep penetration scanning to yeah. see the layout of the actual. Yeah. All right, somebody open up the uh, the Navis's character sheet. Announce yourselves rather than four of you go at it at once. <laughs> Uh, just so you can take one power off of the uh, the ship as extra power is boosted to the senses. And um, I'm in it at the moment. If people okay. are okay for me to take the power, yeah, oh, do it. Sure. Okay, I've taken off a point of power. So can we um, just start. Can we just start slamming shuttles into the top of this mountain as well? <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, the energy is not nothing you've seen before. It appears to be all around you. As you try to start scanning it, um, you get the information I've already said, but then as the the Betazoids get that sense of hostility and whatnot, the readings vanish, and suddenly life forms appear from nowhere and appear pretty much as they appear to be. Horned red-skinned, long fangs, claws, and they are snarling and hissing and appear intent on attacking. Okie dokie. Which, of course, brings us into combat. Did I get everybody? I did not. So let's throw everybody into the combat tracker. We'll give everybody a roll, and then we'll start juggling, juggling the uh, order around. So, which of you guys wants to be the first one to go? I'd probably say either uh, Lenaris or Bravo, because they're the. Yeah. The security, security officer. Oh, security security guard. Take, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So between Lenaris and uh, Bravo, which one do you think would be best to go first? Probably Bravo first, then Lenaris. Okay, let's see if I can stick. Yeah, that's, that's fine by me, I think. Dude. Not letting me do it. Come on. In you go. That's no, just swapping them around. No, I'm glad we brought those grenades. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> round one. Boom. Bravo <laughs> creature. Uh, Lenaris creature. Who's next? Wait. Uh, we not say we can age when we're underground and vulnerable to cables. <laughs> yeah. Throw, throw Nova in next, for a Throw Nova in next. Yeah. Against her will. Literally, sir. Yeet. Yeet. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, I'm having to juggle this a bit because the numbers <laughs> are not maintaining themselves Sorry. so demon goes between you and you and you bop who's next probably me Natala and that puts the doctor. So let me make sure I've got this right. It doesn't always the sort it. The doctor. Is a bad trouble with yeah. Hopped yeah. It. That's, that's well, well, well I'll, it'll take a bit of juggling, but I'll work it out. The doctor normally goes near the end in case any people uh, earlier in the turn uh, get badly hurt. Bom, 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 bom. So I'll try and swap Natala and Bertram around, and we have got something approaching what we wanted. Woo! Yeah. And if no. If no one gets hurt, I, I can always start um, telling them interesting facts about Moss. Can I do like a pre-action of shouting in that I'd, I'd already shouted good kitty at them, but since I know since the hostility and that uh, Natala is out front trying to draw attention away from her onto me. Alright, well... Just, just from shouting, no real action. But the, well, the you'll have to shouting. wait until it's your turn. Oh, okay. Now, Bravo was the first to go since Bravo's on security. What does Bravo want to do? Ah. Uh, he got lots of cover and stuff around, so. Hmm. I think, yeah. Uh, so, Natala is currently the most at risk as she's in the open, so. Uh... <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so who are you shooting at? Uh, this one. That one there. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. You log that, and you are shooting it, and you're using your phaser type 2. Okay, so that was... Actually, you just rolled damage there, so the thing to actually get it is a difficulty... Oh, I always do that. Two control plus security, please. Uh, can he use hand phases as a focus? Absolutely, he can. Four successes. So, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, you've got over and above what you needed by two, so you can use that to add an extra two dice to um, what you rolled there. So you may as yeah. well roll an extra 2d6. So. That was... So you rolled a 4 and a 2, so you added an extra... So you got... 1, 2... 1 success, that means you've got 4, so you mentioned rolled a 2 on that one as well, so that's 2. Hang on, that was a... If that's an effect, that means we're still on the six. So, pardon me. One, two, three, four, five, six in total. Six stress in total. One, two, three, four, five, six. Inflicted on that guy. And an effect. What was the... You were using a type two phaser. So it uses... The only thing it could use is charge. Go to the rules for weapon effects. No, either area. If you spend your, uh, if you spend your quick action, then you can use charge. I think to give vicious. Yeah. So I can allow you to um, retrospectively add vicious if you wanted to have done that. Yeah, if you're feeling generous. Yeah. So that'll take an extra one stress off of that creature. For Vwash. So yes, your phaser lances out with a with a beam that strikes the creature. And it cries out as it gets struck. Um As a free action Would the beta swords be picking anything up from these creatures? Uh nothing that I haven't already Okay. So it's just hostility that was there. Yeah. So uh, you're staying there, I take it. Okay, cool. Yes. So, do doom, do doom, do doom. Want to smash and hack and be generally horrible. So, this is going to be hand to hand combat, which, if I recall, is daring plus security on Nova. So, we're going to perform this task. Uh, okay. Complication. Hmm. Get, okay. Get for fighting me. <laughs> Got one <laughs> success. Complication. Let's think. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Okay, I'm gonna throw in that the demon lunges forwards because there's no other word to describe what this thing is. It's red and it's got horns and it's got claws and it wants to kill things and just appeared out of nowhere. Demon. Uh, um, he takes a slash uh, towards Nova, but Nova kind of ducks slightly out the way and it catches a um, piece of bracing on this cart, which then topples. Uh, topples over, which knocks the demon itself onto the floor, creating an advantage, but uh, some of the debris does come spinning loose to uh, actually cause a small injury to Nova as a result. So there's a temporary advantage being caused 
uh, against anyone who wants to attack that demon, thanks to its complication. Okay, now we go to Commander Lenaris. Fire in the hole! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which um, one are you going for? I'm going to lob a grenade. Ooh, uh, okay. Frank X has three so, in the back. Yeah, probably somewhere... Somewhere where you're pointing more or less right. Let's see if I can catch it there first without getting um, Dinner okay. Tala in the blast. So, grenades, because they have um, an area, this one also has charge. So, if you want to spend the, the thing to giving it the vicious uh, quality, yes, utilizing a grenade, though, has an escalation cost, which means you give me one threat by escalating the combat to using grenades, but it will be an attack that affects every uh, creature in that immediate area, so it'll be one attack against all of them. So yeah, uh, it's going to be... Well, it's basically a ranged attack, so that's going to be control plus security, so... Let's see how spot on you can get this. Uh, guerrilla Tactics. Yes, yes, I'll allow Guerrilla Tactics. You are fighting in a confined space. Okay. Um, I, if nobody uh, objects, so I'm going to use a point of momentum as well. I certainly don't object. Okay. All right, then. So don't wanna, I don't want to misplace this one. <laughs> yeah. He, he hurls his hand back and then it slips and gets the <laughs> fire in the hole. So um, two successes, which I think is what you'd need to land the shot perfectly. So you got spot on what you needed. So if you can just give me a roll for the uh, grenade damage, we'll see what happens. <laughs> The vicious on it. We will have the vicious. Oh blimey, look at that. So two so two effects means two vicious, which means it does nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Takes that one out. He down. Just knock him out for a minute. Uh one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Takes you down. Takes him down to that one. Big flash and a detonation as a pulse wave uh, goes out, completely knocks one of the uh, demons already hit by Bravo's phaser shot to the point where it uh, falls against uh, a load of crates and then seems to, its, its body seems to burn up and consume itself, leaving nothing afterwards. The other two um, just get caught up in the blast wave and uh, roar in pain as they get hit by the, the, the pulse. Otherwise they stay standing but are very, very injured. Uh, is Commander Lenaris going to stay there? Um, yeah, I use my fast action for the charge, so... Good point. Right. All right then. Moving on. The next one up is one of the demons that actually got hit and hurt. So that one is going to move and jump up onto the uh, crate by here. It's going to actually try and take a swipe at Commander Lenaris using Daring Security. Two successes, which was enough to hit. Now, it's going to use that. What are the effects of this? Vicious and knockdown. So I'm going to use two of those effects to do vicious, one to do knockdown. So the creature jumps down and unless of course you want to spend two momentum to uh, make a, a avoidance dive. Um, I think we might need the momentum for people who are going to act after me, so 
Okay. I think I'll take. So one, two, three, four, five stress off of uh, Commander Lenaris's track due to the vicious, and the knockdown means that uh, he gets hit with such a powerful blow that he gets knocked from his feet. Okay, moving on. Nova. You have a very angry demon, but it's on the floor. Yeah, I'm wondering if it might be worth trying to capture it, just to study it, or potentially study it now. But I'm thinking capture would be better. How so do you propose to do that? I'm going to try and contact the child on the ship to beam this thing up into a brig force field location. Okay. And drop it. Drop my com badge on it if necessary, but you should be able to lock onto it from my signal, I believe. Okay. I am going to ask you then to give me hmm, a reason plus science check, and this is going to be aided by the ship. Um, Gareth, you can be the ship since you probably won't be taking much action at this point, unless you actually want to fire a phaser. So if you can give me the ship aiding with... Let me see. This is going to be... I have a focus of transporters and replicators. Can I yeah. use that? Okay, yep, fine. The ship is going to be aiding with... Let me think. Sensors and science. Sensors and science. So it's going to be all down to whether or not the ship... One success. Okay. Yeah. In that case... Use your focus, then, to only have two successes. Let's have no successes. Zero. Nova had no successes, so it was all down to... I think it's because I got an 18 and a 19. It's a terrible one. I could re-roll, I suppose. The creature the does one. get beamed away. Second, I'm just gonna have to... All right, so the beam out happens. The creature appears to be gone. So next up. No, sorry. Uh, I'm just also gonna move myself into a more protective. <laughs> Yeah, you say that. Guess who goes next? Oh, no. <clears throat> oh, okay. One thing you didn't want to happen. I don't know, mission accomplished. <laughs> You're definitely taking the notice off of uh, Natala. As this thing gets two successes mm. to be able to hit you, so yep, that's a success on its regard. Nine it... and nine, demon tag. <laughs> there was an effect and three successes, so this is going to be the vicious to inf actually I'm gonna go for knockdown so one two three stress and a knockdown unless of course you want to spend two momentum to have not had that happen at all okay so the creature kind of lum lumbers forward on all four limbs and takes a swipe taking out Natala uh, not Natala Nova's legs out from underneath her speaking of Natala Natala's turn. What would Natala like to do? Probably just trying to stop it from savaging Nova anymore. Um, so, phaser it, I suppose. Alrighty. So, a control plus security, please. Uh, re roll that, I suppose, maybe? One. If you want to spend a momentum to re-roll that, yes. Go ahead. I will take the momentum off. As long as everybody else is happy with that. Happy to yep. Okay. Re-roll results. One success is not enough. Mm -hmm. kind of, the shot kind of goes wide as you fear hitting Nova. Um, but you didn't use your... Um, Minor action to yeah. 
um, modulate the, the the charge of the phaser any, so you can use it to move wherever you want to go if you wish. Yeah. Um. Is there any way of just helping over up or? Um. I mean, you could do something basic like wave your arms and try and grab the uh, the creature's attention. Yeah. Okay. We'll consider that what we do next then. As for this one, uh, this creature bounds up onto the crates and then uses them to close with Bravo. So same thing. Ooh, this one got three successes, adding one to my threat, which I think I'm going to spend in order to increase the number of dice. Three successes and an effect, so I'm just going to make that vicious to inflict one, two, three, four. Unless, of course, you want to spend two momentum to roll out the way. Okay. Dr. Bertram. I can't steal people in combat, can I? Sadly, no. Yeah. Right. Okay. I want to try and actually scan these to work out the nature of them, or if indeed Ooh. they are actual things rather than some sort of projection into our minds or manifestations by the weird power there. Right then. Do that on my pack, you later. Insight plus science check, please. Okay. I don't suppose I can use xenobiology as a focus? No. No, I'm afraid not. Insight and science. Okay. However, what have we got? Yeah. Think the long term. Balance nature and science. Reaches the foundation. Yeah. Thirst for knowledge. Yep. <laughs> Thirst for knowledge could be a good excuse yeah. to use determination. Determination? Uh, oh. One too many there, dear boy. <laughs> yeah. so use all to... the determination! Yeah, because I'll use one point of determination. I didn't mean one left. <laughs> okay, so that, that, using determination. Um, well, it's two dice, isn't it? Well, uh, just, yeah, just roll the regular two dice. Okay. It should include... Three wow, successes. it's just as well you did roll your determination. Yep. Okay. Hmm. I will save that <laughs> for in just a moment. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> uh, you got spot on what I wanted you to get, which is three successes, so... I'll I'll save that, but the the results are surprising. So I'm going to move on to the next round, but something uh, unexpected happens as you all hear voices and people come running out of the cave mouth. Each of them wearing um, regular colonists garb, it's not like they're wearing um, sackcloth or anything like that. But um, they all wear lived in clothes and they all seem to be holding... Um, they all have a, a necklace with a, a medallion that seems to be um, a number of interlinked circles. And these folks are going to add themselves... To initiative and do so without rolling anything. Cool. So <laughs> I'm free to put them wherever I like. So I'll put one there. I will put one there. And I will put one up there. Let's see. Do, do, do. There. Okay. Cool. So uh, Bravo still gets to act first. So. Just segment ace to stun and throw it at the newcomers. 
So they're, they're looking aggressive at us, are they? No, they are looking at you and basically shouting, Don't worry, we've come to help! <laughs> and they're definitely indicating you in that regard. They're ah. come to help you. We are bravo. Ah, uh, the commander's pretty skilled in fight, so... Uh... Uh... Alright, alright, it's a flesh wound. It's just a scratch. Right, okay. Hand-to-hand uh, -hand is daring and then security? Correct. Okay, yeah, so... Uh, uh, oh, hand-to-hand -hand combat as a feat. as a focus. Yay! Yep. Definitely. Three successes, so you gain a momentum from that. Uh, yeah, so feel free to, uh, ooh, four effects, right, blimey. Let's see, unarmed strike. Hand to hand specialist, he's been beaten up too much by Andrews, he knows what he needs to do now. Yeah, exactly. So, um, the effect is knockdown, so, as well as scoring, uh, one, Oh, can two, I choke slam it? Absolutely. Yeah! <laughs> They send it up to the stone pile driver! <laughs> you basically, um... He puts yeah. it through the table! You basically get close... Um, Bravo closes in, manages to get inside of its... inside of its guard, puts a few choice strikes in, and then um, sets himself up so that he has the leverage, and hefts the thing from its higher vantage point straight down onto the ground in a massive slam <laughs> the bravo bomb. bomb i'm definitely saying that's what they call it from here on in <laughs> the crowd that goes wild <laughs> this is turning into real slobber knocker <laughs> devon get the tables <laughs> so uh yeah uh ooh, we appear to have moved the commander up so let's Drop him back down the initiatives a little bit because it's a demon's turn. This demon was the one that was looking that knocked down the commander himself. It kind of spins around on its vantage point and looks at the newcomers. And um, Commander Lenaris, from your vantage point on your back looking up at this thing, it seems to regard them with. Not fear. Definitely isn't happy they're there. And it seems to definitely be weighing whether or not it wants to jump down and finish you. Or move off to take these guys down. So I am going to leave this up to the will of the dice gods and say on a one it tries to attack you, on a two it goes for them. It's going to jump down and try to attack you. Okay. So it's going to utilize its advantage that it's set up to uh, make it easier to attack you, which reduces the difficulty down. Which is just as well I did, which means it earns an extra success, which means I'm going to use that to add in an extra dice of damage. These are all going into uh, Vicious, so that's going to be six stress that I inflict on the commander, unless you want to that spend... That seems worth tucking and rolling. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll tuck and roll. Okay, so just rolling out of the way, just in the nick of time as the thing pounces and lands both claws as it would that possibly would have done really nasty, eviscerating damage. You manage to use your position, just roll along the ground to get out of the way, uh, therefore nullifying the creature's attack. Right, one of these guys runs towards the one next to uh, Nova and then brandishes his um, symbol at it. He yells forth this, this litany of, of begone creature in the name of the, the, of the holy god I cast you from this uh, from this place, at which point the, uh, the, the the demon standing over Nova triumphant um, starts to writhe and burn and then it literally gets consumed with fire and disappears. 
Commander Lenaris. Bad kitty. <laughs> it's supposed to be getting into my head. <laughs> Nova might be projecting. Uh, I'll use my fast action to get up, and then um, I think the odds of shooting somebody is pretty bad if I miss, so I think I'll just go for a good old one-two. Alrighty. I will allow you to utilize guerrilla tactics here. Bearing. Bearing security. Two successes, which is what you wanted. It's not every day you get to punch a demon. No. All you need to do now is, after this, is to punch a nun and you're done. You retire happy. Not that I'm advocating punching nuns, by the way. Let me quickly, quickly throw that in. No successes. Oh no! Do you want to spend a momentum to reroll oh, those damage dice? Uh. How yeah, many do we have left? Two. Yeah, sure. Okay. Reroll. Reroll those. Reroll those results. Two successes this time. So there we are. You do punch the demon. Takes, it takes uh, some of Commander Lenaris' shots, and it's definitely uh, beaten and bruised and bloodied, but not looking like it's going to go down. So you used a Fark's action to get up your slower action to actually punch it, so that's you done. Uh... I realised that um, security dudes get kind of like survived to strength etc i was like when i saw the damage then i was like why is that so low it's like well it's because both andrews and bravo security are security buffs so they're they're physically capable and then i looked at some of the other stats and I'm like wow nova and natala are doing one on an art yep. so uh the demon that was knocked on its butt by bravo uses its action to get up off the floor. Bravo's just swinging his arms ready for round two. <laughs> Flexing his shoulders, reloading his biceps. <laughs> Hold on, John, see that you can't see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. I'm going to post that on all of the internet. Two successes means it managed to land the hit, unless, of course, you want to spend the last two points of momentum to get out of the way. No. I'm actually Bravo, going like, to... That's, the bet, you, that's the, bet you've got, uh, the best you've got. I'm going to spend a point of threat to add more damage to this <laughs> to make it a good old eight, or a seven with a knockdown, rather. I'll do a seven with a knockdown. Five, six, seven. Bop. Bravo's like. The creature returns the favor and knocks Bravo clean off his feet. Use the demon driver. <laughs> yeah, use the demon. Not the demon driver! <laughs> Nova. I think I'd stand up. And probably go and help Bravo, so flying tackle off the barrier into the demon, try and knock it over. Uh, I'll go on just for. It's totally what Nova would do. Yep. But any complications, of course, mean that you're not. <laughs> you might trip and fall, so. Yep. <laughs> so this is going to be daring security? Daring security. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah! So place yourself where you wanted to go. Uh, well, I guess onto the demon is just flying tackle it to the ground. This one over So yeah, him. that'll get as close just as you can. Grabbing the saucepan from the <laughs> oven and going, you naughty, naughty boy! <laughs> <laughs> Improvised weapon, minus two damage. 
<laughs> More like a Nova from the top ropes. <laughs> <laughs> Roll unarmed damage, please. <laughs> Do you know what we're finishing? The saucepan supernova. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, oh my god. god. <laughs> wow! <laughs> I believe the appropriate sound effect is wank! Wank? So yeah, it makes contact. <laughs> the creature just kind of shudders as the uh, as, as the impact goes through it, but it kind of then turns menacingly to look at Nova. Bravo, however, is really impressed with how the usually flighty Nova is all too willing to do a diving elbow onto a demon. So, uh, kudos. Next voice of purity comes running forth and also declares that creature anathema. And it also goes up in flames and disappears. Atala. Not brought back the destroyer. He was only two days away from retirement. <laughs> the weapon needs to be have the accurate thing before you can aim it, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Need to start fitting some of these fire faces with scopes. Um, <laughs> uh... <laughs> Massive scope on a handheld phaser. I like it. Uh, do you want to spend a momentum to re-roll the 19, but keep the 5? I think we might need the 2 for a dodge with how bad some yeah, people are. Let's, 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 let's hold off on that, so I'll just kind of, just trying very hard not to hit other people. <laughs> <laughs> Lenaris kind of ducks. <laughs> <laughs> And this voice apparently runs in and. Yep. Declares that one to be an enemy of God. And it erupts in fire and. goes away. Did that just happen? The. <laughs> The uh, people who came out of the mine then start setting about um, checking you guys over. Are you all right? Are you are you hurt? Are you injured? We have medical facilities, well, basic as they are, inside of the caves. We can help you. That um, is most kind. I'll give Bravo a check over to see how bad he is. Okay. <laughs> While then. Um... Being sure to make sure I save the results I got from on my tricord and scans on my turn. So, yes, this is a good place to uh, bring this session to a close. So the uh, the people who came out of the cave identify themselves as the voices of purity, and that they are willing to um, give you shelter inside of their little uh, uh, where they're living at the moment inside of the cave. They have a few medical supplies and they're willing to share them with you in order to help heal your wounds and make sure you get better. As for the doctor himself, he's still rather surprised at the scans he took of the creatures. Because it turns out these creatures have no indication that they were alive before the moment that they materialized. Um, the detailed scan that the doctor took shows that they had all the necessary components within them to function as a living creature. So they had internal organs, they had mass, and obviously they had horns and other kind of strange um, spiky growths from them to give them the menacing appearance. But the medical scan you got, to all intents and purposes, those creatures were born came into existence that very second that that energy spike happened and they uh, their bodies have a signature very similar to that energy surge that happened but is nowhere uh, that that energy signature has now dissipated it's 
not coming from anywhere now, whereas it came from everywhere before. It was as if these creatures just sprang to life out of nowhere. You know how in the previous one I said I was getting the Finn vibes? <laughs> uh, I'm what are you getting Forbidden now? Pla Forbidden Planet vibes. <laughs> uh -huh. They uh, they were so powerful in their technology, they unleashed their own id, and it destroyed them. The, Interestingly the enough, the transporter, which I think was what Sean was about to get to, you, get yeah. to yeah. says that when they beamed uh, whatever it was on board, they had an empty transporter pad. But did it pick up a pattern? It did. Yeah. Sweet. Well, I can just do that at least. And on that note, we will end tonight's session. Uh, uh... Next week for another episode of WWE. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, ladies and gentlemen, the winners of this match, the team of Lenaris Loss and one of the Bravos, <laughs> Team Navis! And they're getting over the top of the rope. <laughs> Doing the people's elbow with a frying pan. <laughs> well, there you go. Sadly, we didn't get to see the double team finisher, um, the Starfleet Slam. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, everybody, for coming along. That was brilliant. Um, thank you very much. Yeah. Interesting things abound and mystery. More mystery to, to, to solve. But now you've made contact with the Voices of Purity, so you can find out what they're all about next week. And of course, as Jan quite <laughs> appropriately put it, did that just happen? Yes. <laughs> Lenaris is totally conflicted about what just happened. It's, mm. it's sort of something that will have to be processed. You know, nothing like the descriptions of what the Par Wraiths were supposedly like, but <laughs> um, definitely creatures out of, you know, evil so yes yeah, very interesting well everybody who's tuned into the uh the stream uh thank you very much for doing so i'm sorry i couldn't see the chat again because the uh little widget i had designed to allow me to see the chat has stopped functioning handily so it seems i'm still not out of the technical woods yet but uh for everyone who tuned in and who is still watching thank you very much for coming and thank you all to the players for being so awesome as usual. And we will Thanks see you much. guys next week. So, yeah. Welcome. Thanks. Bye-bye.